his team earning the home field advantage for this AFC title game and remarkably good weather. Nick Lowry will give the ball to Buffalo first as he spins it away. Russell Copeland takes it at the goal line. The rookie from Memphis State to the 20. And twisted down at the 22. Eric Anderson and others there for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jim Kelly brings on his offense, and the K-Gun will go to work. The no-huddle offense, and that means Pete Metzlars will be in at tight end. They'll use only the one tight end, Fina, Parker, Hall, Davis, the pro bowler Ballard on the front line. Kelly has uh, the great Thurman Thomas with Bill Brooks, Don Beebe, and Andre Reed as his three wide receivers, and Metzlars, who had a dislocated little finger in the game last Sunday, ready to go today. So the strategies now will develop as Buffalo begins from the 22. Kelly comes out throwing and hits Thurman Thomas. A gain of about six to the 28-yard line. Martin Bayless up to make the tackle. Here are the Chiefs on defense with the two Pro Bowl starters on the outside, Neil Smith and Derek Thomas, the two 300-pounders, Phillips and Sally Moa on the inside. He'll use only one linebacker, Lonnie Marks, and six defensive backs. Kelly getting no time at all. Almost intercepted by Mincy, who darted in front of Pete Metzelars. Mincy, who had five interceptions, second to, on the team this year. Dick, for the second straight week, Kansas City going with the 4 one look. You see Lonnie Marks, 51, playing the middle linebacker. Last week, that was handled by him. Jaime Fields. He's deactivated, but six defensive backs here for Kansas City. Third and long three, and Thomas with his first carry, and he is stuffed at the 31-yard line, and that will not be good enough for the first down. 75, Joe Phillips, who played uh, his early career with the San Diego Chargers, acquired last year, and had a big game against Houston last week. And Dick, there is a recurring theme with this Buffalo offense, the last four years, they spent a lot of time three downs and out. It has put tremendous pressure on the Buffalo Bill defense. Buffalo doesn't uh, lead much uh, of anything in time of possession. One of the downfalls of this K-Gun offense. Tough to block Chris Moore and tough to return. He kicks them very high. This one, not so high. Damon Hughes, oh, has handled a short hop at the 35 and takes it to the 47. Did he ever flirt with disaster on that one? Tasker there to make the tackle. Well, there is more that can go wrong with catching that ball in the bounce that can go right, but the first break of the game goes to Kansas City. Bounces right up in his stomach, and he makes the uh, reception. Damon like... Hughes is an uh, outstanding baseball outfielder. You see Tasker, boy, they, that's what he was arguing about. They all but tackled him. Hughes was an outfielder in the Milwaukee Brewers chain, and he used that ability to feel that tough punt. Joe Montana with great field position at the 47. Marcus Allen gets the call. No game. Cornelius Bennett and Phil Hansen with a tackle. Bennett going to another Pro Bowl. The offense for Kansas City. Blocking uh, that treasure Joe Montana. All the Pro Bowlers. Zach Grunard Shields the rookie and Siglar. Marcus Allen with Kimball Anders in the backfield. J.J. Burden, Willie Davis, the speed outside. The tight end, Jonathan Hayes. Second and ten. Incomplete, intended for Todd McNair. Now the passes to the wings, to the sidelines, because of the crosswind, will be effective. And, you know, at 37 years old, you can't expect Joe Montana to start out like a 27-year-old. Even though he warms up pregame, he goes into the locker room, sits down for a while. It takes a while for that arm to get going. But Pittsburgh found two weeks ago how he starts doesn't necessarily determine how he plays. So did the Oilers. Third and ten. Good protection. Long, but too long. J.J. Burden, the closest chief, three and out for Kansas City. Dick, it looked like Burden stopped the pattern, which is something you can never do with a Joe Montana. Watch him give up a little bit. 
Now, whatever the pattern is drawn up, and this is Joe Montana and Paul Hackett's offense, run the pattern out. Russell Copeland back inside the 15. Brian Barker to punt. Wobbly, short, and out of bounds outside the 20-yard line. The Bills will start at the 22 after a 31-yard Barker punt. Time out at Rich Stadium. When I walk into a hotel, the most important thing is the feeling that the customer is respected. In the Kansas City Chiefs unable to gain a yard, and in their first possession, Buffalo but nine yards. Bruce Smith, he feels he had his best year and was uh, deserving of the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Some certainly voted for this uh, giant talent. As well they should. Uh, since this guy came into the league several years ago, I don't know that he's played two successive downs without being double teamed. That's how much respect offensive coordinators and offensive line coaches give him. Herman Thomas, the low running back. Kelly with the three wide receivers and next goes to the right. And here's Thomas up the middle. And he slashes out across the 25 to the 28 before Neil Smith and others can trip him up. How important is he to the offense? He and Kenneth Davis account for about 50% of the, the, the attempts by the Buffalo offense. You can't wear him out either. He's got the first down. He's got more. With determination across the 35, a 10-yard pickup. Kevin Ross made the stop. 1,300 yards rushing in a 1993 season, and his yards per carry is down 3.7, but... In the playoffs, that's where Thurman Thomas wants the ball. And that's exactly where Marty Schottenheimer, Kansas City coach, does not want him to go straight ahead. They become so much bigger and tougher. And I didn't quite get turned up that time. Across the 40 to the 41, Gary Thomas, the tackler. And Vic, that is the counter. The play that they feature, you're going to see the onside block down. You're going to see the guard and tackle pull. Actually, Lonnie March 51 does an excellent job. He shortens the vertical running lane. The pursuit catches up with Thurman Thomas. Second and six. Little short screen to Reed. Well covered. And Dan Saliamua, the nose tackle, able to drift back and be in on the tackle of Reed. Stopped at the 45, or it'll be third and three. Uh, Dick, you know, Marv Levy made an admission to us that I thought was rather interesting. He said, nobody's intimidated by this hurry up offense the k-gun anymore so we have to be much better at executing what's going on out there and to this point buffalo is out of the shotgun and they're going to get the offside they draw off neil smith and howie long and the raiders certainly can identify with that that drives a head coach who used to be a defensive coordinator nuts because they're looking they should be looking at the football and coach went mighty defense Referee Johnny Greer with the honor of working this AFC championship. He got two of them. Not just one. Phillips and Neil Smith. It's all a matter in the, uh, as Kelly explained it, the volume with which he exercises the count. Kenneth Davis gets his first chance, and he's into uh, Kansas City territory at the 47-yard line. Lonnie Marks on the stop. And Dick, back to that... Uh, drawing them off sides. What it will eventually do, it, if it continues, is slow down the pass play. Just for a split second, you hold those defensive linemen in their stance. So long range for this game, it has a very advantageous effect for uh, Buffalo. Whoa! Under pressure from Gary Thomas. Incomplete. Albert Lewis knocks it away from Andre Reed. Lewis, the veteran from Grambling, and Marty Schottenheimer said, how could he not make it to the Pro Bowl? He had six interceptions. Gary Thomas flips. That's normally Neil Smith's side. He has a free shot on Jim Kelly. Untouched. Again, you see uh, Derek Thomas even slip. Well, Derek Thomas could have put his helmet right in the breastplate of Jim Kelly and went for the shoulder tackle. Third and six for Kelly out of the shotgun. And deflected by Martin Bayless. German Thomas said, or Kenneth Davis it was, the receiver said, hey, he's holding my jersey. But no flag, and uh, Buffalo will have to punt. Decent pressure from Kansas City, too. Second week in a row, you're going to see Joe Phillips, 75. The full rush right into Jim Kelly's chest. That's two passes in a row now that Jim Kelly's gotten hammered by the Kansas City up front four. Dane and Hughes 
does not feel this one. J.J. Burton, Marty Schottenheimer said, I didn't like what I saw the first. And Burton calls for the fair catch at the 10-yard line. So Joe Montana started near midfield last possession, deep in his own end this time. John Francis. The interior of the Honda Civic was the... Marv Levy's Buffalo Bills, a reason they've been to three straight Super Bowls. They've earned the right for home field advantage, and here at Rich Stadium, they've never lost a playoff game, 7-0. and oh. In fact, the last home playoff game Buffalo lost was back at War Memorial Stadium in 1966 to Kansas City. Kansas City going to the first Super Bowl. Gets five, gets 11. First down for Kansas City. Marv Patton and Mark Maddox, the young linebackers, collaborate on the tackle. One of the things that uh, Marty Schottenheimer told us last week taught him that his uh, team can live and, and win in a hostile environment. Very difficult in the Astrodome. And today they feel confident that they can combat all the noise from the crowd. They're not playing. They're not running many audibles today. That's their plan. The amazing Marcus Allen led the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Had one again last week in Houston. Short yardage this time as Daryl Talley topples him inside the 25. And uh, Martin Schottenheimer, when he first got Marcus Allen, he said, he showed me something when, it, when he was with the Los Angeles Raiders. The Raiders get Bo Jackson, and Marcus went up and blocked for Bo Jackson. Didn't complain. He did his job. He said, Marcus Allen is the consummate pro. And he said, I've never seen anyone better in short yardage of goal line. Second and eight for Montana. Take to Allen. Well, all kinds of time for Montana. He throws to Willie Davis incomplete at midfield. Henry Jones with a good lick on the receiver. Davis, who had a touchdown last week in Houston. Dick on the roll. They're trying to get Ernie Thompson 45 open. Well covered by Buffalo. Joe goes downfield, and you see it's almost end over end. That's into the slight breeze here in Rich Stadium. Uh, Davis, if this ball is high, tough to make this catch, especially when it's, it's not in spiral. Can't blame that one on the receiver. That one's on Joe Montana. Who is 0 for 3. And looks at third and 8. Let's see if... Buffalo will bring an extra backer. No, they rush only four. Incomplete to Marcus Allen. So Montana, inauspicious in his start, 0 for 4. And pressure from Cornelius Bennett. Looks like there's going to be some help, but it ends up Siglar 66 on Bennett. Bennett, a good, quick outside rusher, gets pressure on Joe Montana. Ball thrown behind Marcus Allen. So Barker to kick again. We're just uh, six minutes plus into this game. We've had four punts. That was Tasker harassing him. Ball to Copeland at the 40. Running start to the 50. He is nailed, stays on his feet. And finally dropped at the 47 of Kansas City. 35-yard punt, 12-yard return, timeout. The playoff, Marty Schottenheimer, and every year with Kansas City. And he was a member of that 66 Buffalo team, the last team to lose in the playoff, 56. Linebacker Marty Schottenheimer, University of Pittsburgh. His teammate, oh, none other than Paul <laughs> McGuire, the feared punter of the Bills. And Jack Kemp, the quarterback, who has gone on to much greater things. So field position goes to Buffalo and Kelly off some play action has a lot of time and throws underneath the Metzelars who juggles and holds at the 41 yard line a gain of uh, about six. Metzelars had a big year had 68 catches to lead Buffalo. Yeah, look at his left hand there he's got the catch where he broke his little finger and anytime he has his hands up to catch the ball pinky first 
he's going to have difficulty hanging on to it. Now he releases inside. And watch this ball bounce off his hands, and he's, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it for you. That no huddle uh, offense is tough on the replays, isn't it? Thurman Thomas doesn't get anything. In fact, may have lost a yard there. Pelham McDaniel, 77 in on the side. Now watch. Hands up. See the ball bounces off the cast first. Pete Metzler is normally a very sure-handed receiver, the leading receiver for the Buffalo Bills in 1993. Loss of one to Thomas, third down and four. Well, they now have three for six. The protection is going long. Caught Andre Reed out of bounds at the 14. Pickens never looked for the ball. Pickens acquired middle of December. This is a mismatch. Kansas City does not want Bruce Pickens on Andre Reed. They want Albert Lewis, number 29, on Andre Reed. And Kelly took advantage of the mismatch. Now he did look for it, but he never found it. It was in Reed's mitts. In to Thomas, or Thomas maybe two. Derek Thomas, and Derek number 58, and Thomas on Thomas. Just as we have two Smiths that are rather brilliant in this game. Uh, Bruce and Neil playing the same position. 58, Derek Thomas. Didn't make the official scorecard. But he'll be in another Pro Bowl. Five for five. For the five-yard line, no catch. Bill Brooks. The trap is the call. Pickens on the coverage, and it's apparent that's uh, the direction that Kelly's going. He's trying to find Bruce Pickens and throwing to the weaker of the cornerbacks. And that's one of the things that this K-Gun can do. Yes, good call by the officials went through his hands. They can isolate a receiver, and Kelly can scan the field and find the matchup he wants. Third down eight from the Kansas City 12. Thomas, big hole. him in a blitz. Kansas City not known as a big blitzing team, but a perfect call by Jim Kelly to catch him in a blitz and well blocked up front. Steve Christie missed two extra points last week here against the Raiders and hits his first today. Buffalo, six plays, 47 yards, seven points. The interior of the Honda Civic was developed with a sunblock to help protect the fabric from fading and cracking over the life of the car. So while you may have a limit on your time in the sun, the Civic doesn't. See you tomorrow. City blitzes. It's well picked up by Buffalo. Just straight ahead blocking. They do the job. And Thurman Thomas pops right through the line of scrimmage. And then there's nobody left. Mincy 42 tries to arm tackle him. Can't be done. What did Schottenheimer tell us? When he's running goal line to goal line, Thurman Thomas is like a 240-pound running back. There's nothing to hit on him. Well, that'll run Kansas City out of the blitz. Well, Kansas City, in beating Buffalo in their meeting in late November at Arrowhead, allowed only 43 yards rushing to the Bills, and that was key to their victory. Already in this first quarter, 37 yards on the ground for Thomas and company. Not a good sign yeah. for Kansas City. And that is the baseline of this Buffalo Kagan offense. It gets a lot of attention about the three wide receivers and throwing the ball, but the mainstay is Thurman Thomas running it. and combined yards, 1,315 yards rushing. See Buffalo off to a good quarter start while Montana has struggled early. John Stevens will be the deep man for Kansas City on the ensuing kickoff. You saw Montana, he missed his first seven passes of the Pittsburgh game that opened the playoffs. 
And the Chiefs, uh, with a block punt late, able to beat the Steelers in overtime. Yeah. 0 for 4 today. But against Pittsburgh, he started out with gloves on his hands. And then after the 0 for 7, took the gloves off. No gloves today. Steve Christie to kick it off. 7-0 Bills. Good kick. Stevens, the former Patriot, at the 4. 20. 30. Good return to the 35-yard line. Back to the touchdown. The key play on the drive was the throw to Andre Reed. Excellent pass protection. Kelly's going to look left. He's got single coverage. Bruce Pickens, just new to the Kansas City Chiefs. They get him December 10th. And Jim Kelly can find the mismatch. And if they don't cover for Bruce Pickens, he's going to be very busy all day. Take the Allen. Knocked down by Daryl Talley. He had a man wide open. Kimball Anders, there wasn't a blue shirt within 10 yards of him. Buffalo is running this double zone. They're taking away the outside receiver, so Montana is correct trying to get to the inside of the defense, but watch Daryl Talley. Hits him in the face mask, and Kimball Anders, you're right, Dick, was the intended and wide open receiver. 0 for 5 for Montana. Marcus Allen finds a hole. Oh, look at him slither through, and he's all the way to the Buffalo 41-yard line. Henry Jones, the last Buffalo Bill, gets him down 24 yards for the venerable Marcus Allen. Boy, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Marty Schottenheimer can't stop complimenting Marcus Allen. Kimmel Anders with a good lead block. Look at this move on Kelso by the aged one. Takes a lot of heat from his teammates for his age, but Marcus Allen is fresh and still run with the best. Allen out. Anders gets the call, and they have him surrounded. Callie had shot through to spoil the play, and then Henry Jones came up to finish it off. Callie had a superb season, led the team in tackles, had three interceptions, one for a touchdown, 61 yards against the Jets. He forced four fumbles, had a couple of sacks, and didn't make the Pro Bowl. Yeah, and he also rooms with Bruce Smith. He should get an award for that, too, on the road. Or vice versa. Or vice versa, yes. Oscar and Felix on the road. A loss of two on the play. Allen back in. Montana. Oh, what a catch by Keith Cash. Has Cash come on in the playoffs? The ball was deflected. He had already gone up for the catch and had to hang. Gave it the old Elgin Baylor and came down with it. One of a pair of twins as it's tipped by Maddox. Has great concentration. Drafted as a wide receiver. Has put on 30 pounds. And Dick, this is key because in this double zone, the tight end and the running backs through the middle of the field are the receivers that Joe Montana is going to have to look for. Cash, who kept the hopes of the Chiefs alive with a block punt, and then had a big game receptions as well. In fact, he has 11 catches and a touchdown in the two playoff games, and let's see if he got the 12 yards in the first down. Very close. Just by inches short. And, of course, uh, in that West Coast offense, you need a tight end to throw to, like Brent Jones. They weren't sure Jonathan Hayes was going to be the receiver, but Cash has turned out to be the guy that Joe Montana likes. Hayes back in. He's the blocker, and we've got third down and inches. Ernie Thompson also comes in. He's 257 pounds at running back. Just outside the Bills' 30-yard line. Under five minutes remaining, first quarter. It's a fake to Allen and a throw to Thompson. And the former Indiana star out of bounds at the 19. First down, Kansas City. Thompson doesn't catch many, but again, did you see that play action fake by Joe Montana? Very well done. Look at the influence it has. Pulls it out. He's already looking at the receiver. That is something that it has to be taught. Quarterbacks just don't come out with that ability. And Bill Walsh and Sam Weitz and the other people that Joe Montana's finished career around 
really emphasize that. That's one of the things Joe Montana is most proud of. Montana trying to drive the Chiefs to the equalizer. In trouble. Picked up at the 18. Jeff Wright got him down low. There's a flag in the Buffalo secondary. Johnny Greer holding against the Bills out of Terry a first down. The flag is nice. The positive yardage for Kansas City is good, but to this point, this Buffalo double zone really holding 53 defense. First down. On Marcus Patton, this double zone really having an effect on Kansas City at the outset. Taking away the outside receivers, Patton's an inside linebacker. He's either coverage on a tight end or a running back. Joe needs those receivers, those inside receivers against this coverage, Dick. They mark off the five yards in the first down and now a conference. This, uh, like all of the playoff games, an all-star crew, not a crew that worked uh, in familiarity with one another through a course of an entire season, but it's an honor for them, and let's give them credit. Greer, Botson, Fares. The foul occurred on a running play. We will penalize five yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, it's uh, the same result, five yards and first down. The other officials, Quirk, Creed, Finken and Luckett. Marcus Allen sprinting into the secondary and he's to the seven yard line. Marcus Patton made the tackle. Patton who grew up uh, in Southern California, Los Angeles, went to UCLA and uh, watched Marcus Allen as a collegiate star in that city. Good pull by the right tackle, Sigler 60, uh, Shield 68 up through the middle. Excellent block at this rookie from Nebraska. This 68 Shield, young man at Marty Schottenheimer just goes on and on about it. He walked in there, plays like a veteran. Second down and four. Allen with 44 yards in this opening quarter. He gets it again. Oh, -ho! and does he get it? Breaks the tackle, but doesn't get anywhere. Bruce Smith was a man who stopped him cold, and Mark Maddox got him to the turf. This is where he's most dangerous, Bruce Smith. Down on the goal line, very difficult to double-team anybody. There you see Bruce Smith stand up, has the quickness to still get inside. John Alt's trying to sell pass. Bruce Smith, great recognition and quickness, jumps inside the block to make the tackle or assist on the tackle. That might have been a touchdown. It was a big hole for Allen, but Smith makes the huge play. Smith may have been offside. Montana incomplete in the end zone. Intended for Tim Barnett. Mark Kelso on the coverage. But no play. The legal procedure against Kansas City. So Bruce Smith was pulled offside. Well, you would expect the guy that has to block uh, Bruce Smith. Is it John Alt, 76 on the roll? He's looking in at Montana. And then when he flinches, turn around to look at Bruce Smith. I mean, with, with the crowd noise here, he's trying to catch the pre-snap by reading Joe Montana's lips and then turn around and look at Bruce Smith. With the ball back to the 13 and a half. Underneath Allen, incomplete, well covered by the Bills. And the field goal unit comes on, Nick Lowry, third all-time field goal kicker in the history of the league behind former Chiefs Jan Stenerud and the great George Blanda. 326 career field goals for Lowry, who at Dartmouth was a senior when a fellow named David Shula was a freshman. This guy's been around long, so long that they're coaches in this league now that have played with him in college. 31 yards. And Kansas City. A long drive for three. Timeout. 2.14 remaining in the opening quarter. The Bills, 7-3. Responsible for the two tight ends and the running back. The last play 
they run this and try to get Marcus Allen free in the middle. Buffalo has done an excellent job of making sure that the wide receivers are taken away. Now, Montana and Kansas City are going to have to figure something up the middle here or Buffalo's going to stay in that defense. And let's not forget the play that Bruce Smith made on the six-yard line. That was second and three. Allen had a hole. Smith inside to stop it. And that might have been the difference between a touchdown and the field goal. Seven to three it is as Lowry kicks it off. Oakland at the eight. Fumbles the ball, and it appears that Kansas City Fred Jones is the man who fell on it. Yes. <laughs> Benny Thompson was the man who made the hit, and Thompson, along with Steve Tasker, two of the best special teamers in the NFL. And look at 46. He fights off the blockers. Thompson says his entry into the NFL was for special teams. And he now wants to play a little defensive back, but when you can make hits like this and give your offense great field position, you get game balls. I don't care where they list you, you get game balls. This man from New Orleans said, you watch me, I'm going to force one of those in the game when we talked to him yesterday. Thompson, he says, I love it so much, I volunteered to play in the World League just because I, I like to play every week, not just during the season. Let's see if Kansas City can convert from the 24. Montana underneath of Davis right at the yardsticks. About 10 on the play. Patton the tackle. <laughs> well, Kansas City's initial adjustment here to the, to the double zone is a little bit of motion. And look at there. 26 straight. Uh, both coaches first thing out of their mouth. You know, just the team that takes it away the most will probably win the game. Now that's even Marv Lee had that court down pat, 26 and 0. A first down on the throw by Montana. Third completion, three different receivers. Marcus Allen, nothing there. Good solid hit by the two backers, Patton and Maddox, who has had a good first quarter. Uh, as if this defense of Buffalo over the years hasn't had enough time on the field. Great field position for Kansas City with the fumble. And the defense goes on the field again. This is a defense that since 1990 has faced more plays than any team in the NFL. Second down and nine. Montana on the fade to Burden incomplete. Nate Odoms the cover. Odoms will be a, one of the three agents apparently after the season and had a brilliant season, a Pro Bowl year, nine interceptions, but Burden had it on his fingertips. Very close. Joe Montana's always had that ability to properly judge distance. Puts it invariably where it's catchable. And again, this is the double zone. Man under 37's got his hand on him, but so did Burden. There was a little hand fighting going on there. Montana, three for ten. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Odoms. Odoms had it flopping right toward him. J.J. Burden, the receiver. And on comes Lowry for another field goal attempt. Again, trying to get inside the defense, Dick. Up underneath the linebackers. Montana forced to go to the short. Excellent coverage by Marcus Patton. And then Nate Odoms almost makes the interception. Good protection for Montana. But Odoms almost gets this one. Another 31-yard attempt by Lowry, who made his first from this exact distance. Nothing different about this one. So the fumble by Copeland on the kick return results in three Kansas City points, and Benny Thompson can chalk that up on his side. Seven to six, Buffalo. Bills all week long. Fans, media here in this city, they feel like they're in a, their own prison. Yep. It's just them against the world that nobody wants them to go to another Super Bowl. And Jim Kelly said maybe a few out there are becoming sympathetic that uh, maybe the fourth time will be 
the Buffalo Bills year to win the Super Bowl. But the majority of the media coverage, uh, as you all well know, has been, oh, no, not Buffalo to the Super Bowl again. And that's really been their rallying cry. Let's make them all mad. Let's go back to the Super Bowl for the fourth time. In fact, one of the slogans, the T-shirts, even worn by Marv Levy, was let's, well, upset the upset them off. Uh, see you in Atlanta. <laughs> well done, Dick. <laughs> I wondered how you were going to handle that. But they uh, have a chance. This game is so incredibly momentous for Buffalo and this franchise. Because if they win this game and do win a Super Bowl, they'll be regarded as one of the great Absolutely. teams. If they don't, this may be it. This may be the end of the line for this uh, wonderful run for Buffalo. Copeland will be hanging on to it more tightly this time as uh, Lowry sends it right at him inside the five. Well, he was protecting it at the 18-yard line. Didn't run with quite the same ferocity and tackle made by Eric Anderson. And we're a week away from Super Sunday on NBC. And what a lineup. It begins at noon Eastern, 9 in the West. As Barkley and the Suns against Boston. And it'll be Kevin McHale's jersey number retired. NBA inside stuff. Well, talking about stuff, Sir Charles has got plenty of it on and off the court. Then uh, 3.30, a look at Atlanta. Oh, and Bob Trumpy's closest friend <laughs> next Sunday. Kelly. Deflected by Pickens. Intended for Andre Reed. And they give him help that time. Kevin Ross comes over from that free safety spot. Watch the hit Pickens again underneath, and that's obviously the guy they're going to. And Rock cast on his right hand. Used to play corner, always hit like a safety, and Andre Reed's going to feel this one Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, no matter where he is. Kelly on second and ten. For Brooks this time, he had two touchdowns in the Raider win last Sunday, and he's hit at the 31 first down. Pickens again on the tackle. He's going to get his share of action today. That's quite apparent. Well, Buffalo thinks it's easy Pickens to this point. Final seconds, opening quarter, the Bills 7, Kansas City 6. The winner to Atlanta, San Francisco, or Dallas to be the opponent. Plus, Neil Smith, Albert Lewis, and on the stop. Excellent push by the Buffalo Bills offensive line. They've not only tried to counter, but once, so they're going straight ahead. And they're going straight ahead at Sally Amu and Joe Phillips, two huge individuals in there. Reed, a little short screen to the wide receiver. He's across the 40 to the 41. That'll be near a first down. Martin Bayless makes the stop. Well, you see that play, Dick? The lead blocker there for Andre Reed was Thurman Thomas out of the backfield. He was the guy who got the first block on the linebacker. Very well designed. They've used that play twice. That's obviously something that uh, they've watched in the film yes. and a play that Marv Levy liked. First down on that ball. Delay for Thomas. Oh, look at him straight through. And into the clear. Thomas all the way to the 25. Three yards for Thurman Thomas. Dick, again, what they're trying to create right here is a vertical running lane. A vertical running lane, and they get it for Thurman Thomas. Excellent blocking up front. That's what the Buffalo Bills want. Longest rush of the season for Thomas, and now Kenneth Davis takes the ball, and he has another first down to the 11-yard line. Oh. 15 on that play. And last week, this Kansas City defense held Houston at just 39 yards rushing. Straight ahead blocking Kenneth Davis, a player who is more of a slasher than a darter. Like Kansas Thurman City. Thomas. Watch timeout. That's a basketball timeout, Dick. Stop the momentum.
escape that leads to suspicion. I don't trust you, Doc. A crime that leads to betrayal. How's your wife? You're supposed to make a deal with him! The deal wasn't good enough! Then you should have walked away! A chase beyond the limits. Name Joe Gibbs at Washington. You're going to see a great seal block on the strong side. Kelly gives the ball to Thurman Thomas. Watch 70 Fina, 74 Parker. The seal job they do on, on Sally Amu and the linebacker. And Thurman Thomas squirts through there. Picks up 33 yards. And 90 yards rushing for Buffalo so far in this half. Marv Levy couldn't like uh, that statistic anymore. Yeah. It's a nightmare to Marty Schottenheimer. Keeps using a timeout to try to slow things down. And Thomas is indeed tackled in the backfield by Neil Smith. Smith, who led the NFL with 15 sacks and pressures constantly. He had four forced fumbles and makes the big defensive stop there. And he's a big key against that counter, too. He's got to beat the block of the tight end when it's run to his side. He's playing to the tight end, Pete Metzelar, today for one reason, to stop the strong side counter. Loss of three. Kelly pointing out Martin Bayless, the safety of moved up on the line of scrimmage. Now Bayless backs off. Kelly changing plays. And goes to Brooks. Missed tackle, and Brooks is inside the five. Bruce Pickens had him about the seven and missed the tackle. Well, we've certainly identified their choice today. Bruce Pickens is a... And then at halftime, maybe change the number on his jersey. First and goal at the three. Thomas walks in. Dick, that was a quick snap by the Buffalo Bills. The Kansas City Chiefs defense was not deployed. What a first half for Thurman Thomas. Feeling Marty Schottenheimer already taking some notes that will be used at halftime adjustment. 80 yards and nine convincing plays for the Buffalo Bills. The extra point by Christie, 14 to 6 Buffalo. championship is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By Acura, some things are worth the price. By Delta Airlines, you'll love the way we fly. And by the American Express car, don't leave home without it. Happy times here in western New York. The Buffalo Bills 14 to 6 and that last drive so impressive as they ran the ball with uh, ease and walked it in for the touchdown. 14 to 6 and Christie kicks it off to John Stevens. Very short. Stevens all the way to his 13. And bounces to the 29-yard line. 
Let's go back to the touchdown. Rick, if you look at what happens here just before the ball is snapped, if we can separate Buffalo Bills from Kansas City Chiefs, here's where the run takes place. I don't think the Kansas City defense is deployed properly. They do blitz on the inside, but you see Derek Thomas standing up here. Wait a minute, what are we doing? A huge block by Pete Metzlar's 88 on 51 Lonnie March. Shouldn't be that easy. You, should, you could have scored, Mr. Anberg. You could have scored. <laughs> That's what I said. Shouldn't be that easy. <laughs> Montana throws that one away. Jonathan Hayes, the closest chief. Now, Dick, Kansas City's in a real bind here. They're down 14 to 6. They're facing the double zone. And what helps against the double zone, corners up, safeties out. So the spot to get to is in here. But you need play action to draw linebackers. And to this point, look at Joe. You see the corners up. There's no outside receiver to go to. He tosses it out. Buffalo can't play the whole game in that double zone, but it's working now. Marcus Allen earns only a couple of best. That'll bring up third and long. Tally and Maddox there for Buffalo. And third and long. That double zone was designed for the long yardage situation. So you got to look at the, at the tight end down the middle. you got to look at the running back down the middle because that's linebacker coverage. And Kansas City needs this conversion big. That was Schottenheimer talking to his defensive coordinator, Dave Adolph, trying to find a way to stop the Buffalo charge. Meanwhile, third down and a long eight for Montana. With protection, Bob breaks down. Jeff Wright with a sack. The veteran from Central Missouri State. He had five and a half sacks in the regular year. Montana looking down the middle, trying to find a tight end. Then he goes outside, and Jeff Wright drags him down. First sack of the day for the Buffalo Bills, but they've good, got good pressure on Joe Montana. Barker to punt. Copeland at the 40 of Buffalo. Good driving kick. Copeland 37. 40, 45, 50, and stop cold at the 47 of Kansas City. 44-yard punt, 20 on the return. Timeout. BC starts next Sunday, but Charles Barkley goes to the mecca of the game, Boston Garden as the Suns battle the Celtics. And at halftime, in the tradition of Larry Bird's retirement, a special moment when Kevin McHale's number 32 is raised to the Raptors. Just the start of the NBA on NBC Super Sunday. Well, as the defense came off the field, Jeff Wright, Biscuit, Cornelius Bennett, Bruce Smith. <laughs> Headbutting head -button without helmet. Definitely defensive players. <laughs> no no question. End. Nope. No, Derek Thomas, maybe that's one of the adjustments Marty trying to make. The all-star linebacker is not here on first down, and Darren Nickel, 92, 280 pounder, has replaced him. Trying to get more beef on the defensive line. So, Kelly goes long for BB. Incomplete. He was bobbling. He didn't have control going out of bounds. Dick, if he catches it cleanly, it's a score. Jim Kelly had already rolled the seven. He was uh, going to pick up the pot. If he catches it the first time, it's six points. But the right foot goes out of bounds, and it's an incomplete pass. Tough call and a good one. So Kelly trying to strike quickly with a 14-6 lead and nearly had another touchdown. 10 26 left in the second quarter. <laughs> Thomas. Somehow got his body through a little small crack in the defense and a pickup of a five on the play. Back to the previous uh, attempt to catch the ball. I think if he catches it cleanly, he can concentrate on keeping his feet in and he scores. It is a game of inches. Taylor was pulling on his arm a little bit, but third down, a long four for Kelly. Underneath, complete to the tight end, McKellar. Keith McKellar has his first catch today. First down. Uh, Kansas City's defense is doing nothing against the Buffalo offense here. Receivers open all over the place. There's Dave Adolph, the defensive coordinator. He's trying to come up with something, but 
with the pressure put on Bruce Pickens to cover. Now they're going inside. Everything's working for Buffalo. And Thomas again. He's breaking the first hit every time, and he's inside the 30. He's been hit at the line of scrimmage on almost every carry other than the walk-in touchdown, and he breaks that tackle as if it were crepe paper. 82 yards rushing for Thomas. And when, historically, Buffalo tries to run to the corner with Thurman Thomas in his first half, a lot of it straight up the middle. Seven on that last charge. Thomas waits for his blocker. Get something out of nothing, and another first down inside the 25. Neil Smith made the stop. When you can run the ball like this, it just wears out a defensive line. It's the counter again. Now watch him wait for that second block. House Ballard, 75 out there in front. It's not a lot of yards, but it's positive yards, and it's what Buffalo wants to do. Thomas again. 5, 10, 11, first down. He's close to 100 yards in the half. Again, the guys up front doing an excellent job. The center, Ken Hall, the two guards, Davis and Parker, they are shoving a very good and very strong defensive line all over the field. Thomas comes off with 97 yards and two touchdowns. This opening half, the Buffalo hero thus far, Thurman Thomas and the Kansas City sideline in bewilderment. Miami Dolphins are missing their mascot. The San Francisco and now Kansas City hero known for his fourth quarter comebacks, but if you give Buffalo too big a lead, nobody comes back against this kind of offense, and they seem unstoppable at the moment. With a 14-6 lead, a first down inside the 14, and Kenneth Davis spells Thurman Thomas. Goodness, 116 rushing. That's success. Offside Kansas City, Davis on a free play to the 11-yard line. I see it drawing them offside, although there are Kansas City Chiefs motioning that it's against the Buffalo Bills. Moving on the left side, one official saying. Johnny Greer. Ball start, number 88. Pete Metzelars. Well, he's right here, and at 6'8", 255 pounds, he's hard to... No, oh, that's... <laughs> Buffalo is already in yeah, the, the neutral defense, zone. Yeah, the defense, right. Kansas City was in the neutral zone, and then Pete Metzelars moved. And Kansas City was in the neutral zone, and Metzelars moved, and uh, a break for the Chiefs there. Well, where's Bruce Pickens? He's covering Billy Brooks. Near sidelines. Looks like single coverage, Dick. Mm -hmm. That's where Kelly's looking. He throws underneath to Metzelars inside the 10. So they cleared Brooks through picking zone and then threw underneath to the tight end. 11 yards on the play. Metzelars, the tight end, runs a little drag. The primary receiver is Brooks, the guy down the field, but coverage goes deep, so he gets Metzelars up underneath. Nice pickup. Derek Thomas returns, and so does Thurman. Second and three. Thurman Thomas to the five-yard line, where it'll be third down and uh, about a yard and a half. Now at this point in the field, short yardage and goal line, Marv Levy calls the play. The rest of the time, Jim Kelly, Gail Gilbert, Tom Bresnahan. That little list is all the short yardage and goal line, and that's what Marv Levy does for this offense. Thomas hit at the line of scrimmage, and it was Neil Smith who denied the first down. The all-pro defensive end Smith with his uh, fashion statement across the bridge of the nose. The Broadway Bridge, we call it in Kansas City. His seventh tackle, and this was a very big hit for the Chiefs because instead of a possible touchdown and a 21-6 lead, Marv Levy has to send out the field goal unit. And more if you're a Kansas City fan, you hope for Albert Lewis to block another kick. They need something to go their way. This is a short 23-yarder for Christie. He punches it through. Oh, 
The only thing good about that drive for Marty Schottenheimer was they didn't get seven. Yes, but again, Dick, running the ball almost at will. Gaining positive yardage. He's got receivers open. He's identified a weak link in the Kansas City coverage. Bruce Pickens, they're going at receivers covered by Bruce Pickens. Things are working and working well for the Buffalo Bills. Seven minutes and change remaining in this first half. Stay with us. Uh, be interesting to get the analysis of uh, coaches uh, Ditka and Gibbs, particularly uh, the former Washington Super Bowl winning head coach, in that uh, much of the action on offense for Buffalo resembles some um, of uh, his innovation. Yes. Started in St. Louis when uh, Don Coriel was there. Tom Bresnahan was there. There were a lot of great coaches. And Bresnahan brought it here. It's made this offense. Now it'll switch us back to the veterans, Allen and Montana. Kansas City with only 66 yards total offense in the half. And you see Buffalo 7-7-3 seven, seven, on their last three possessions. Stevens, the deep man for Kansas City. Neil Smith made a four-point tackle. Just as Bruce Smith did the same uh, on an earlier possession in about the same spot. This one has really hit well. Stevens will have to take the kneel down. Montana starts from his 20. 25% completion. And Dick, there has been outstanding coverage by the Buffalo Bills. Montana, his numbers are saying it's a bad half. But the coverage has taken almost every away that Joe Montana wants to use. Well, Jim Kelly has their Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, who brought this new system to Kansas City before Montana. It was acquired in a trade. Montana, no one over there. Again. McNair had gone to the inside and was open, but Montana had figured in the other way or didn't see him and threw the ball away. Again, great coverage. You're going to see the tight end come out here. The slant run by the wide receiver, and again, it's double zone. Corners up, safety's out, linebacker coverage. He has no one. He throws it over the Kansas City sideline, and it's just a throw away. Marcus will run it. And won't get anywhere. Cornelius Bennett made the tackle, and you can see he was trying to strip it away, a loss of a yard. And Kansas City has to establish, even though they're down 17-6, to six, some semblance of running game. The reason? To hold the line of but linebackers at the line of scrimmage so there's some place to throw. And Buffalo is eating them alive at this point with this defense. They allow progress to the 20, no gain. Third and ten. Been tough on every down for Montana. Tight end. Down the middle. Incomplete. The tight end, Cash, jumped too soon. The ball was fluttering, didn't have a lot on it. And uh, his timing was off. Had he stayed his ground, Cash, he had a catch. Inside the linebacker, this is what Kansas City's got to come up with. Watch the safeties come into view. The double zone. This is the spot they've got to exploit. And that one fluttered just enough that Cash could not make the completion. Jumped too soon. Five straight hit the ground for Montana. And so Barker will punt again. Copeland back at the 40. And once again, Buffalo's going to get excellent field position. Copeland drifts to the 37. And... Uh, Nothing much there as Eric Anderson made still another tackle on special teams for Kansas City. 43 on the punt, no return yardage. So 5.56 left. Buffalo leading 17 to 6. And Marty Schottenheimer now will hope that some adjustments have made that will pull back the force of Kelly and company. Seven in a row for the Buffalo Bills. They're Biggest scare three years ago, and uh, Denver almost beat him. Carlton Bailey had the short interception and the touchdown, the linebacker, to win the game for Buffalo. Then Sally Amour out, and Tim Newton now in a tackle. Kelly throws the metalized incomplete. 
the few things that didn't look good for Buffalo You're right. half. Everything else has worked. That was kind of a half roll, I think, because of the running game. Tim Mua getting a little, just a little breather on the sideline there. Tim Newton, uh, his replacement, 96, looking for a trip to Atlanta to play possibly against his brother. They'd go head to head, Nate Newton of the Cowboys. Wide open is Reed, no one near him, and Pickens and Ross trying to get him out of bounds here, another first down. Well, they have identified where Bruce Kitt Pickens is. He's hurt. Now watch the, he really drops off and drops off big time, just a, a hitch, and watch. Bruce Pickens hurts something here. Looks like the helmet right in his shoulder. Uh, he is back out on the field, but he really winced in pain on that right shoulder when Andre Reed hit him with the helmet. First down, now it's Thomas. Nothing inside, so outside he goes and picks up nine more. Dave Taylor in the secondary trips him up. Laying waste to a quality defense. Other than seven yards now for Thurman Thomas. And the up front guys are doing a great job. It gives Thurman Thomas, he's beyond the line of scrimmage when he has to make his move. Breaks the tackle of Taylor. Man. And who preceded Barry Sanders at Oklahoma State. Well, they couldn't get the handoff off, and Kelly gave his old basketball fake. He used to use that at East Brady High School. And on a blown play, he gets it up for a first down. Watch. He'll remember that one. Thurman Thomas slips. Kelly did. Smart puts it back in there. Yes. <laughs> it works. It works. It works on Kevin Ross. That was that old running push shot that he used to use at East Brady. First down at the 38. There goes Thomas. He's got ten more. Oh, my goodness. What an exhibition. Here's a man who led the NFL four consecutive years in scrimmage yards. He was second this season to Emmett Smith. The four in a row is a record, breaking Jim Brown's mark. And he is running a rampant today. Go to the well again. Oh, oh my! First down and more. Ken Hall, Parker, Davis, House, Ballard pushing them all over the place. The first contact by the free safety Mincy. Goodness. Ken Kenneth Davis in. He'll pick up the straps. Gets a couple. It is a feast at this point for these fans. Hungry to prove to the world that they're deserving of a fourth chance to the Super Bowl. And they are devouring uh, what they see. They also always are saying, why can't he do this in the Super Bowl? Any part of this, why not in the Super Bowl? Davis again slowed down as uh, Derek mm -hmm. Thomas infiltrated. And then Joe Phillips and others made the stop. Cullen McDaniels. Just in case you're wondering, with the great uh, half by Thurman Thomas, the championship record, the AFC championship record for rushing a game goes all the way back to 1963 when Keith Lincoln of the Chargers rushed for 206 yards. He has 129 in less than a half. 20 carries in one half. It's a big play for the Kansas City defense to stay within two touchdowns. Third down to Kelly. He throws. Brooks wide open. Kevin Ross makes the tackle inside the 10. Not enough for the first down. Fans want him to go for it. Hey, the way things are working for Buffalo, I'm not sure I wouldn't. But on comes Steve Christie. Of course, you can't trust players. Davis says only that far when really it's about three times What do you mean far. you can't trust players? Well, coaches and players are like fans. I mean, I, I like that. They want to always go for it. But if you're the coach and uh, they're not giving you the right survey, your job is the one that's the well, difference between well, I mean, that. that that's, the, that's the price you pay for not being in a huddle or on the field, Dick. 25-yard attempt by Christie. And it's good again. Three short ones for Steve Christie. And the Bills now lead by two touchdowns, 20 to 6. Well, I don't know what what's enough points when you've got Joe Montana on the other side of the field, but to this point, the Buffalo defense and the performance by Thurman Thomas have turned Montana into just another Joe, Dick. And that's, uh, that's a statement in uh, 
That's Bold hard to camps. do. That's hard to do. But he's just another Joe. Four straight possessions have led to Buffalo score. Two touchdowns, two field goals to build the 20 to 6 lead. And and it's been, you know, without any exceptional long pass play, it's been grinding it out on the ground. Big chunks. Big. You see, they call this offense the K-Gun. It's generally about 27 to 27 and a half minutes possession in a game. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense because they have to face so many plays, but in this first half, it's all turned. Slow, grinding possession by the offense. The defense is well rested. It should be ready for a hot second half. Any great back would take those numbers for a game. We're two minutes and a tick away from halftime. Christie lines this one right through the end zone. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. 156 exactly left in the half. Joe Montana, can he produce before the intermission? Hey, we're live on Prodigy Seven. Ken Hope, who has just been a devastating blocker, breaking holes open in the middle of that Kansas City line. From the 20, Joe Montana. Less than two minutes to go. Play action. Completes it to Marcus Allen. A gain of nine. Tackled by Mark Maddox. And now Kansas City will go with the hurry-up offense. And this might run Buffalo out of the double zone, but to this point, it's worked in the half. Second and inches. One timeout is all Kansas City has. And now they use a couple to stop momentum. Underneath to Kimball Anders. And Anders looking for a block. Gives ground and goes down at the 35. This might help Kansas City psychologically here in this hurry up. They're getting the receivers open over the middle. They're beating the double zone here right now. 115 left in the half. Over the middle. Whoa, Willie Davis out scraps Nikki Washington for a tough catch. Washington was right there for the intercept. First down. Joe Montana is going to take a timeout, and then he changed his mind. He's going right to the line of scrimmage. That ball thrown behind Davis. Great catch. Underneath to the tight end cast. Along the sidelines, a good effort and out of bounds to stop the clock at the Buffalo 37. Patton fell down. 53, the linebacker had him in coverage, and he slipped down. Cash just runs the little out. Well, I see 53 on the ground. Cash did that against Houston last week. 16 on the play. This is just a drag pattern run by Cash. Turns it up the sideline. Washington gets him out of bounds. 20 to 6. Buffalo leads. Final seconds. First half. Screen to Allen. Okay. What a play. Get Cornelius Bennett running right with a talented player like Allen. Uh, at times you run out of ways to describe performance, but he sees him throw it and then chases down Marcus Allen. What a play. He was a charging on Montana, and watch him here. He just runs right by Joe. He said, oh, well, that's where it's going to go, huh? And even Goodness. had Allen caught it, it would have been for no game. Goodness. 41 seconds. Subpar numbers for Montana. Underneath, Todd McNair breaking a couple of tackles. McNair to the 15, to the 10. He's to the five-yard line, and here's where Montana will use his timeout. 31 yards, and McNair made a short pass. A long game with some tough running. This is going to come right at us, Dick. He's like the third receiver. They're releasing people up in the middle of those linebackers. McNair coming out of the backfield. An excellent receiver and runner. I don't know why he doesn't get more work for the Kansas City Chiefs, but they flooded the interior of that double zone, even though Buffalo had their dime package in that six defensive backs. Tanner with great time to throw, just had nobody to throw it to. Well, the lift that a touchdown would give to a Kansas City team with 25 seconds to go, well, who could measure it? It's certainly a great opportunity for Marty Schottenheimer to get his team emotionally back into this game. Reminder, Domino's Pizza Halftime Report. All the first stringers are here. We'll have a first-half analysis from two men who can 
certainly cover that well. 49ers Cowboys report that came of course later, and OJ and Will will have their on the field reports. No timeouts now. Montana's got 25 seconds with which to work. And Dick, you're right. They need a touchdown. Five for Three six. I'm going to help. Better on this drive than all the rest of the first half. Montana's passing efforts. He sends Burden left, Davis right, tight end Cash on the right side. Secondary, no one's open. He throws it away. Burden was the closest chief, and Montana had on low. That was a classic example of that 49er offense. You've got your little checkpoints, and if you're not open right away, you look for the next man. You're absolutely correct. Darrell Kelly also hits him. Here's the wide receiver, J.J. Burden. Good pickup by Marcus Allen. Eventually, Darrell Kelly. It looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage, but a bad throw again by Joe. Well, Odom's uh, getting away a little hand yes. checking though, today. A lot of contact. 21 seconds. Underneath. Oh. Incomplete and intercepted. Through the hands of Anders. Right to Henry Jones. Oh, my. That will be difficult to overcome. It's the halfback circle. He's going to come right around here. And Henry Jones just... Watches it bounce off the of Anders' hands. Actually, Jones should have stayed in the end zone. They would have got it at the 20, but with only 13 seconds left, there's really no danger. Anders, an excellent receiver. He expected some contact, just let it slip through his hands. That would have been a touchdown. Instead, the, the interception by Jones on the gift ricochet, and that's the end of the first half. And do they love it in Buffalo? Twenty to six at the intermission. We'll be back after a message from the NFL and these words from your local station. Forty-one. But remember, uh, the total yards. Uh, Kansas City got more than half that total. Seventy-five in that last three-up drive. And that's seventeen minutes of possession by the Buffalo Bills, just taking the ball out of Joe Montana's hands. This is a team that normally uh, scores a lot of points in its possessions, but doesn't take much time to do it because they don't huddle. Well, they were not only on a hurry up, but they maintain possession time and a two touchdown lead. So it's up to the veterans now on both sides. One will make the trip 917 miles south to Atlanta. Steve Christie to kick it off to John Stevens. 30 minutes to the Super Bowl. Stevens at the eight. And a rather tenuous return to the 16th. J.D. Williams, who has been benched at cornerback on the special teams to make the tackle, and there, Montana versus Kelly. That one interception in the end zone by Henry Jones would have made Kansas City feel a lot better, but uh, as Joe Gibbs said, Kansas City has any idea to get back in this game. I think they have to start this half with the hurry-up offense kick. Will so run. Allen behind Montana with Todd McNair in the backfield. Montana drilled by Talley at the 10. Again, Dick, a coverage sack. Montana was looking all over the place for a receiver. Looked to me like uh, McNair was who he was going to. He's looking second, third. Unbelievable coverage by Buffalo. Their second sack. Now their second half starts on a, another positive note for the Buffalo Bills. Pally trucks up another. Montana calls time, and now they'll stand as one at Rich Stadium. They want an encore, 30 minutes more for Buffalo. The new 1994 Chevy Camaro. What else would you expect from the country that invented rock and roll? 
by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? By the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. A light rain is falling. The worse the weather, the more difficult it'll be on Montana and the Chiefs who trail by two touchdowns and have used a timeout already. Marcus Allen smothered, gets a second shot, gains a tough two yards. Third and long as Daryl Talley and Bruce Smith make another play. And Dick, that was a six defensive back set. 4-1-6 at Daryl Talley, the only linebacker, eventually assists on the tackle here with Bruce Smith. This Buffalo defense now just flying around the field. From the 12-yard line. Kansas City has made good on only one third down in the game. One out of seven. Montana. Underneath to the tight end, Cash. Did he get enough for the first down? Yes. Out to the 28-yard line. Keith Cash, an emerging star for Kansas City and Montana. Hit as he throws. I think Bruce Smith got him. Uh, Bruce Smith staying over in two. frozen. 90 Hansen comes from one side, flushes him. Oh, the three of them hit him. Hansen, Wright, and Bruce Smith. Three-way vice. And Joe, the way he's reacting is one where he thinks it's serious. He got a shot right on the ribs. Last week they had to be injected so he could play, and Dave Craig warming up on the sideline. Well, this is, if you're a quarterback on the sideline watching this game, this he's going to feel like he's going out in the middle of the freeway to play here. Craig did a solid job as the relief pitcher for Montana. And in the entry games, five entry games, was three and two. Even more effective in coming in to a game that Montana had already started. You saw his numbers for the year, seven touchdowns, three intercepted. I can't see what they're trying to... Uh, look at address on Joe Montana. Well, they're not working on his legs. Looks like one of the trainers may have a wrist, a hand. Yeah. At his age, it looks like they're just kind of taking inventory. Joe, is this all right? Is that all right? Three defensive players hit him. One, two, three. That's a triple hit. And then his head really bangs on the uh, AstroTurf here at Rich Stadium. But there's a lot that can go wrong when you're a quarterback at 37. I mean, you name a uh, anatomical part, he's got a scar on it. He, he does. But he's up. It looks like you're kind of... He's wobbly. Perhaps it was the reaction when he, his head hit the uh, turf. We'll get a report from O.J. or Will on the nature of the injury. He delivers a pass under pressure to Cash for the first down. We're just into the second half if you're joining us. The Buffalo Bills with a commanding lead, 20-6. Denied Kansas City a touchdown right at the end of the first half. And now Montana, the new hero in the Midwest, helped off the field. And Dave Craig, former Seattle Seahawk, acquired a year ago on plan B. He was the man who threw all those passes to the great Steve Largent. He having to learn his third offensive system in three years this year. Takes charge. Marcus Allen, nothing there. Mark Maddox submarining and Daryl Talley over the top and Bruce Smith as well. As uh, Joe Montana is being attended to on the sideline, the one problem that Dave Craig has had throughout his career is fumbles. All-time NFL leader in fumbles. He doesn't have big hands. And with this wet weather, yes. a wet ball, it's going to be a tough challenge for him. and Barnett to the left. 
second and 11. Craig's first pass. A oh, drop by Cass. Goodness. Normally very sure-handed, and you just mentioned how wet it is, but again, trying to get the middle of this double zone that Buffalo is running. And when you get a guy in the middle like that, he's got to make the catch. No excuse for that. Kansas City lost only five games this year, but when they lost some of them, they were really beaten. Houston took them 30 to nothing. Miami, 30 to 10. Minnesota, 30 to 10. They trail 20 to 6. Craig scrambling away from pressure. It's Willie Davis. Not enough for a first down. He fumbled. No catch. No catch. Incomplete. He was juggling as Henry Jones made the hit. It is bouncing off these Kansas City receivers. That ball is like it's made out of crystal. Started with Anders going for a touchdown. Ball right there for an easy touchdown. And he let it go through his hands and right to the defense. Pressure by Cornelius Bennett inside Sigler. Big Greg throws the sidearm delivery here. Willie Davis never really has complete control of it. Barker to punt. Copeland back at the 30. At the 32. 50. And to the 43-yard line. 26 on the return. Keith Cash made the tackle. I called and they want friends and family. Watch this combination here 29 is JD Williams, Benny Thompson, the block. And it looks like the helmet is behind the plane of the shoulders on Benny Thompson, and therefore should have been a block in the back, an illegal block in the back, but not called. And Buffalo on the plus side of the 50 again. Another good punt return. Kelly goes to work. First possession, second half. Comes out gunning. Metzelars with a Dislocated finger and catching another one. His third in the game. Pickup of a good five. Tracy Rogers on the tackle. For the first time in the Buffalo Bills history, a tight end led them in number of receptions. Metzelars has been a very nice receiver for Jim Kelly this year. Thurman Thomas. Fumble. Fumble the ball. Let's see who has it. No signal yet. Must have come right back to Thomas. Or they're saying he was down. And he maintains position. Neil Smith, the man on the rocking tackle. This is a straight ahead run again. A good job by the offensive line. Can't really tell when it went out. First down on the pickup. Kelly. Ooh, that's the kind of time he had last week against the Raiders, and it was Brooks that he tried to hit. Dick, I noticed Kansas City has changed their defense. Now, Tracy Simeon in, his, is in the lineup. They've gone away from the 4-1-6 alignment that they started the game with, and that's to stop Thurman Thomas in running. That's the influence that Dave Adolph, uh, the influence of Thurman Thomas and Dave Adolph and Marty Schottheimer's adjustment. The normal four, two linebackers on the inside. Thomas hit in the backfield by Mitchell. And then twist it down. O.J. Simpson has a report on Joe Montana. Well, Dick, the word on the bench at this point is that Joe is dazed. He got his brain scrambled somewhat. They want to keep him off his feet. And it's still questionable if he'll come back into this game. Dick? Thanks, Juice. Uh, apparently it was. Not just the three men hitting on the body, but the slamming of the head and helmet against the hard turf. Third and 11 for Kelly. Goes to BB off his fingertips and uh, just getting more and more difficult to handle the ball as this cold rain, not uh, right at the freezing mark here, and actually uh, was under 32 degrees at kickoff start. And the problem is the officials on the sideline do a great job of keeping the ball dry, but every time they put the ball on the ground, there is a, a nice little egg shape on the bottom that gets wet, the ball gets heavy, it doesn't rotate the same, and it does get very slippery. Chris Moore's third punt. Just trying to angle one inside the 10, and this is for Steve Tasker, who's so brilliant. He's over on the left side. Now he took it the other way to the right side, and uh, it's going to be a good one inside the 10-yard line. Right on the 10. 
23-yard punt, but that's exactly what uh, Marv Levy hit cold for. Timeout. Here's a quarterback Montana, and here three bills sandwich him, and it's that snapping of the helmet against the turf that has dazed him, and we don't know if he'll be able to return. So it's Dave Craig starting at the 10, trailing 20 to 6. This crowd making it tough to hear signals. Had to throw that one away. That Buffalo defense has not backed off a lick. The coverage has still been there. Well, it's not Joe Montana. It's the performance of the Buffalo defense. Jeff Wright, one of the smaller nose-type tackles that's so quick, gets good leverage. Played a very outstanding game thus far. I think you give a game ball to uh, Mr. Corey right there. He has uh, drawn up a defense that Buffalo has played to perfection today. Give to Anders with play no play. Uh, Drew Smith had charged into the neutral zone. Was he pulled off so? And then the tight end. That's a new one. Uh, simulating the start of a play. That's what they're covering the tight ends with. So Craig 0 for 3 in his uh, start as Montana went 0 for 5 at the start of the game. Not much room to roam. He goes deep down the middle and has Burton. And the first down across the 30 yard line to J.J. Burton. 26 yards. Just that little play action fake held linebackers at the line of scrimmage for Burton to get behind him, Dick. Nicky Washington making the defensive play. Watch the two linebackers. They got a hold ever so slightly. That allows Burden to get deep. Greg does get hammered when he throws it, but it just gives it a little space between the defensive backs and the linebackers for the completion. Burden, who had 51 catches on the season, has his first today. Kimball Anders, who played at Houston for Jack Hardy, goes to the 34, a pickup of two, Maddox and Talley, and the linebackers for Buffalo just smacking on every play, and Talley is the leader. Yeah, when, when you talk to defensive players here in, in Buffalo, he seems to be kind of the, the psyche of the defense. Uh, nothing bothers him. He'll play in any kind of weather with any kind of injury anywhere. Play in the parking lot. Marcus Allen. Not able to get through that front line of defense. Two more to the 36-yard line. Tally again with Hanson. And it's almost essential that Kansas City do this because Buffalo staying in that double zone. Kansas City's got a threat in the middle of the defense what they're trying they're not this is not a give up play when they run it up the middle they're trying to impress upon buffalo that we can't run the football well corey saying you guys can't run the football corey sends in two more defensive backs third and five craig the davis did he stay in bounds yes no now they say no which are they saying? One guy's marking it on the sideline. Now it's yes. The 46-yard line, first down. This is the kind of reception that Montana threw last week for a touchdown to Willie Davis in the end zone. Come back for the ball underneath the coverage. Davis does an excellent job of pushing the defensive back away. That's the rookie Thomas, Thomas Smith. And makes a nice catch. Well, obviously, this kid is well covered. He catches the ball very well. When he's uncovered, look out. And another snap, Craig hit hard by Jeff Wright. He's been uh, nailed twice in a row. Handles oh. drops another. But now, that's on the quarterback. That's on the quarterback. That's down off his thigh board. 
I think Dave Craig has already said that that's on me. Craig, one of the great stories in sports from Milton College. When he rolls out here, this is a tough throw, but you've got to get it out in front of the receiver and down there on the lake. That's tough. But we've already established that Tim Landers will let it bounce through his hands. The blank stare of Joe Montana. Six, Buffalo leads here in the third quarter. Oh, Allen slipping as he tried to make his cut. And you can see it's uh, more and more treacherous to handle the ball and to maintain footing. Mike Lodish was there to secure him. Right on the Buffalo helmet, too. He really slips. Right foot goes out and the left foot on the paint. Gets him right down. Has the presence of mind to get up. But Mike Lodish there for the tackle again. You've got to threaten this Buffalo defense with the run. And it's even tougher any on any painting of the carpet. It's much slicker. With the signs on bridge crossings. Now watch out for ice. Yes. It freezes first. Third and a dozen. Drill to Hayes, but that won't be enough for a first down inside the 40. It'll be about a yard short. Right, but this is four down area. Even though it's the third quarter, 6.52 to go. Marty Schottenheimer going to the sideline yelling and screaming at somebody. Craig is going out. No, he's just getting the play on the sideline. Yeah, but it's a no-brainer. You don't have any choice. You've got to get, some, get a touchdown on the board here for your offense. Six and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Buffalo leads by two touchdowns. So on fourth and two, Kansas City goes. And hits at the 20-yard line. It's the tight end cash again. And a great throw by Craig. He had to thread that one through the defense. Again, up through the middle of this double zone. The, the little play-action fake holds the linebackers ever so slightly. The double pump by Dave Craig still has the velocity on the football. Mark Kelso right there to make the tackle, but a first down pickup. And Tally diving just a fingernail away from deflecting that one. Four cash catches, 63 yards. Inside the 20, Craig leading the Chiefs. Marcus Allen. Again, right into a crowd. Just nothing there for Allen. He had a couple of runs early, but for Levy and Walt Corey defense, and very tough on the Kansas City running game. Eleventh play of a long drive for Kansas City. And uh, if not a must-score opportunity, uh, at least let it uh, be known on the whole sidelines that uh, there won't be many more opportunities this golden and craig is the one who has uh, kept it alive with uh, some solid throws second and eight to burden at the two jj burden in front of nate odom's 15 more first and goal kc what an unlikely hero emerging here dave craig this is burden Adams takes the inside move. He's got coverage underneath, so he kind of drops him and lets him make the turn in, and Dave Frank fires it right in there again. Right in the belly. Yes, does hang on to it. Oh, ball hits the ground. But it counts as a reception. And Craig apparently going to use a timeout, or is it Buffalo? It's Buffalo that will spend the timeout. So each team now with two remaining. First and goal when we come back. It seems these days folks are taking a new look at their priorities. With that in mind, Chevy brings you the roomiest full-size pickup ever made. So that family can come first and work second. The extended cab from Chevrolet. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. D'abord, look, la vie. Water is life. It's life in motion. Life in progress. 
man is the perfect animal because he needs solitude and after he's had his solitude he needs to find other people combine that with a magical setting made by man with man's vision and you have a place which is beautiful to live in what the club has given to the world is that we have shown that you can learn and enjoy yourself in the same place and time. In my wallet, I have two American Express cards, one corporate and of course one personal, two club med cards, and a photograph of my wife. That's all I need for traveling. American Express is welcome to Club Med, and anywhere else people go to find themselves. Super Bowl 28. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern next Sunday on NBC. Dick, that last completion to Burden. He runs the square en route, but there's a free safety. Buffalo did not run the double zone here. So it gives Dave Craig and J.J. Burden a, pat, a chance to break up to the inside. Even though an instant replay of years past might not have agreed with that catch. It is first and goal. Meanwhile, uh, Joe is in the state of Ismay. <laughs> Ismay, yeah. Montana town, where they renamed it Joe, at least for the football season. First and goal inside the two. Then an 88-yard drive by Craig. Will they get a touchdown out of it? It's Tally. Oh. Thrilled in the backfield. It's Tally again. <laughs> Oh, and just an inside rush. Nobody touches Daryl Talley. He's right in there to get to the spot where Marcus takes the ball. Jonathan, oh, it's Sigler, 66, who misses the block on the hard inside charge by Daryl Talley. you got to give Marcus Allen credit. That's a fumble-type tackle. You're absolutely right. Hangs on the football. Talley has eight in the game. Second and goal on the yard loss. Allen again. Diving to the one, he's close to the goal line, but not in. Following the block of Dave Zott. Also got Ernie uh, Thompson in as the lead blocker. And you can see it, it shut him down completely. Marcus Allen is a running back that, as you said earlier in the game, Guttenheimer loves on the goal line and short yardage. This is four down area, too. They don't make it here. They got to go for it on fourth down. Marcus, touchdown, Kansas City. Now, that was a very impressive drive engineered by Dave Craig. And Craig, standing in, drilled a couple of times as he threw the ball, was able to complete some difficult passes in third and long, and takes his team 90 yards for a touchdown. Excellent job up front by the Kansas City uh, offensive line. 90 yards, 14 plays. Marcus Allen's 11th postseason rushing, rushing touchdown. Led the league in rushing TDs during the regular season. Lowry gets the extra point, and Kansas City is back in the game. Dick from behind the defense, an excellent job by the left guard side on the fold and the lead block by Ernie Thompson. They get contact on the two inside linebackers, 53 Patton, 55 Maddox. Marcus splits them for the score. Seven minutes, 18 seconds on the drive. Here's the punctuation point. Allen, with that great vision, waiting for something to open, sees a crack in the defense, slides through for the touchdown. Dick, he always keeps his head up. A lot of uh, players in short yardage situations, they put their head down and just take their chances with contact. Marcus is always looking to make that, that slight little adjustment to the run. That's what makes him such a great short yardage runner. Marcus, understandably, uh, right there with the all-time leaders in running for touchdowns in the uh, payoff playoffs. Franco was 16. Rigo with 12, and now Marcus uh, one ahead of Thurman Thomas, who has two today to get up to 10. We're going to the back now. Woo! Kansas City, back. but for a muff reception that would have been a touchdown at the end of the half by Kimball Anders, uh, this would be dead even with 3.06 left in the third. Russell Copeland waits as Lowry 
Sends it toward the four-yard line. Oakland, who fumbled in the first half, oh. hit hard at the 20. Well, he has taken some solid knocks today, and that is Benny Thompson, the man who forced the fumble the first time. And he's so fired up, he'll take on the entire county. Well, he was very upset that Steve Tasker made the Pro Bowl, trying to make a point here to the people in uh, Western New York that, hey, I can play too. Uh, Tasker missed the block, 89. They well, ran right through his block. And of course, Benny told us, look, I'm bigger than most defensive backs you're going to come across. I can run through a lot of blocks. There he did on Tasker. Now it's up to the Kansas City defense as Kelly surveys at the 20. That center, Kent Hull. He has just devoured the man he's been blocking today. Simon Thomas gets only a couple. Tracy Simeon, 54, and Neil Smith, 90. And Martin Bayless comes up from a safety spot to make a tackle. Well, Dick, let me make this point right now. It's going to be more difficult for Buffalo to run this ball in the second half because Kansas City's changed his defense completely. Pickens is on the sideline. They're going with two linebackers. They don't want Jim Kelly to pick on Pickens anymore. <laughs> Kelly. Complete the BB, and BB out of bounds. Close to the yard space, right at the 30. The official's foot separates the ball from the 30-yard line. So it'll be third and that much. He breaks the tackle of uh, Jay Taylor out there, number 27, but it is very close, close enough to bring first, the change out. First catch for BB. Yeah, they don't really need to. That's uh, if they spotted the ball on the 20-yard line. And the ball stands there short of the 30. I, simple mathematics would say, <laughs> yeah, I doubt that that's a first down. But you, you're not sure. You never are sure. No, it could be a hometown chain. What? How could that be? How could that Wait be? A Wait a minute. Time out. No. Time out. That can't be. That's what you do at home. You steal a link from the chain every once in a while. What's going on here? Well, <laughs> there's something fundamentally... Oh, wait a wait, wait. I take it back. I'm going to wait a wait. I'm going to correct ourselves. Remember, that wasn't a touchback. It was Copeland. He didn't quite get to the 20-yard line. Our apologies. They're always right. Oh, those officials are sick. I know you figured out, Professor, but it was up to you to figure it out. <laughs> well, they were so close to 20, and you were thinking touchbacks. And then Thomas, he's thinking about big yards, and he gets 10. He gets 11. Continuing to grind it up no matter what the defense. And that's that counter tray again. He jumps outside. He has been running inside almost at will. He this isn't the counter, Dick, because they don't have the pulling guards. But he bounces bounces it outside. Excellent blocking outside by Bill Brooks. And he picks up a nice chunk of change. Right back to Thomas. And this time only a yard, which will give him 147 yards for the afternoon. Darren Mickel, Joe Phillips in on the stop. 80,000 plus rich stadium. Led the league in attendance six consecutive years up here in Buffalo. Trying to follow the lead of their neighbors across Lake Erie, the Cleveland Browns, the only other team in the history of major professional sports. There's three times in a championship final go of four. Screen, and it's set up for Thomas. 50. 45, first down at the 44. Derek Thomas trailing the play, got him. Any way you can, any way you can figure out to get Thurman Thomas in the ball game, another way it works. Look at the perfect timing. The center and the two guards pull out there. Ken Hall, Parker Davis out in front, and it's Derek Thomas on the tackle. But again, Thomas running goal line to goal line. And a Davis, his sub. He is a tough man to bring down, too. He gets 11. That could be the final play of the third quarter, and showing it up on the ground again are the Bills. Rodgers and Ross make the stop. Hardly a backup player the way Kenneth Davis plays. Would like to have a little more respect, but he's quicker and faster than Thurman Thomas. Just as difficult to bring down. And that will be the final play of the quarter. A quarter in which the only point scored by Kansas City on that one long drive by Dave Craig. 2013 Buffalo, a quarter to go, will return after these words from your local station. 
parade in slaves. Young women, their victims. Her daughter, their property. The bikers will sell girls. End her search. All new Unsolved Mysteries, NBC Wednesday. Do we agree? We agree. When Laura and Judy and I wanted to expand our business, our bank said our husbands had to co-sign. You can't be serious. Then I talked to Ken, our accountant, and he suggested KeyBank because they're very helpful to small businesses. I told them they didn't need a loan, they needed a line of credit. We got our money, and we got it on our own. Donna, I think of you as a silent partner in our business. How can I thank you? You just did. KeyBank really is America's neighborhood bank. <laughs> The TV is on, the kids are playing a computer game, the phone is ringing, and something is beeping. There's likely enough noise in your household right now to make the prospect of an information superhighway put you on overload. This is the world communications was supposed to give us. I'm Mary Alice Williams, and help is on the way. 9X wants to make your life simpler. Right now, they're improving today's services and adding more like a way to reach the one person who can pick up more milk on the way home. Technology ought to be about people. So along with more new choices, you'll always have someone there at 9X to help you choose just the parts that will improve your life. And you won't have to deal with the rest. With simpler communications, you'll have more time for communication. I'll be around to keep you posted. That's 9X, right now. Nick Clooney and Rich Kalman on Channel 2 News, first at 5. The cast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. We go to the fourth quarter. Dick Hendrick with Bob Crumpy. From all the visible evidence, it does not appear Go Montana will perform one of the same comebacks today. Days when... Uh, tackled while passing in the third quarter. It's up to Dave Craig, apparently, as the defense of Kansas City sees Kelly with a first down at their 33, and Thomas, Thomas stopped for no gain, a rare time. Thomas with his 146 yards today. That's uh, already the fourth best ever AFC Championship day. Tackle here made by Martin Bayless. Coming into this football game, I think the head coach has told us correctly that you've got to stop Thurman Thomas. And Mark Levy wanted a lot of Thurman Thomas. On the shotgun, Bayless on the blitz. They pick it up. They throw underneath. Neil Smith checking on Andre Reed, and a fly goes down. Now, he was within the five-yard range to make a check was Smith. You're allowed one bump. Now, they, they blitz. The safety is... Pass in the fence. Number 90. Defense. Ball was, ball was judged in the air. Yes. And therefore, it's not an illegal chuck. It's pass interference. Neil Smith drops off the line of scrimmage. And, yeah, the ball was in the air. Pass interference. Good call, Dick. Smith, that was interesting. Back um, in coverage there. Trying to cross up Kelly. Kelly Guns, wide open BB, inside the 20. That'll be close to another first down right at the sticks. Uh, Dick, Buffalo has Kansas City in such disarray defensively here now. You got Bayless playing on the corner. Dickens is out of the game. They got uh, Kevin Ross playing the other corner. Albert Lewis is on the inside. Two linebackers. Dave Adolph is making this stuff up as he's going along, and it's still not working. Well, yeah, that was the weakness of the uh, team. He keeps going into the latter part of the season, and Marty said, you know, we lose David Whitmore, our starting safety early. Then they lost Dale Carter, who was the starter at the corner uh, with a broken arm, and uh, also lost Doug Terry, and he's tried to mortar in all those cracks with pickups like Felix Wright and, and Bruce Pickens and, and others. But... Uh, Buffalo, too good. They're finding That's right. the weakness. Long drive, and then they reverse to Reed, and Reed at the 20. Good block, and Reed tackled by Mincy at the 12. That's good block by John Davis, number 65 out front. They use that play usually uh, once a game. They like to bring Reed around on the reverse. Now watch who's out here at cornerback for Kansas City. 31, Kevin Ross. Made the change to free safety earlier in the season. Dave Adolph has to resort to putting Kevin Ross back at corner. 
Reed's such a good runner after the catch. They use him as a rusher. That's the 54th time in his career he's buried the ball. Whoops. Lots of yellow on the green carpet. And Crossley, 75, he First down. It's starting uh, to pain deeper for Marty. There's Phillips right here. I mean, what are they? Arms length from the football? Yeah, but Kelly says those are the ones I get. Like Howie Long because they can hear. It's the hearing of his cadence that's that hook that gets them. And uh, the closer you are to me, the more likely you are to jump. That's still a bad excuse. You're looking right at the football. Kelly. At the goal line, caught at the one-yard line by Brooks. Body was in, ball wasn't. And Kevin Ross in coverage is just a, a quick out by Brooks. No, well, the ball must break the, the plane of the goal line, and the officials are saying it did not. A second and goal. Brooks, who had a big game against the Raiders, two touchdowns. And a 29 23 win last week. Davis, the tailback. Fake, Kelly, oh. incomplete to Fina. They go to the eligible tackle on this play, John Fina, who caught a touchdown pass earlier in the year. He must report, tell the officials he's eligible, he's open. This goes right through those tape gloved hands. That was the role that Butch Roll played so brilliantly here for Buffalo when he wouldn't catch many passes, but every one of them for a touchdown. What do you have, seven, eight? Or Something like that, yeah. All of his catches. However many number there was. Ball just inches away on third and goal. This time it's Davis over the top. No. And mark it outside. So fourth and goal. And uh, a Super Bowl balance may be waiting on the result of this play. They're bringing in Thurman. Yep. Uh, they're bringing in Frank Reich, too, and Christie. Well, I think he breaks the plane of the goal line there. There's an imaginary line that goes to infinity above that goal line. It certainly looked to me like he had the ball to the goal line. It's the front edge of that white line. You don't have to be in the end zone. All you have to do is hit that white line. Christie will go for 18-yard field goal. You can't get him any shorter than that. Ooh, and he barely hooked that one through. But it gives the Buffalo Bills a 10-point lead with less than 12 minutes to go. 55 left in the fourth quarter, and we'll see uh, Bruce Smith and the Buffalo defense in a moment as Steve Christie with a 10-point cushion. Kicks it for John Stevens. That's a five. And Stevens to the 25. Well, much coming up next weekend on NBC Sports. Of course, the Super Sunday and uh, the Super Bowl from Atlanta on Sunday. But to uh, whet your appetite with uh, the light of the best figure skaters in the world. It's the professional championships on Friday night at 9 o'clock and Saturday at 4 see the women's and the men's competition here on NBC. The Dursoff Colors World Professional Figure Skating Championships from Landover, Maryland. First down, Buffalo so much superior. The throw by Craig incomplete and tended for Willie Davis. Craig is 5 for 10 off the bench for Montana. Uh, you know, this formation with Anders spread out has gotten Buffalo out of the double rotation zone, so Kansas City's receivers are now open. Unfortunately, Joe Montana, the guy who runs his offense best, is on the sideline. It's up to Dave Craig. But it is a different Dave Craig than the man we would have seen at midseason because he's been schooling all these weeks to learn the system and feels now he finally has a grasp of it. Marcus Allen hitting the backfield. Loses a yard. Bruce Smith was the man there first. 
and Cornelius Bennett to finish the job. Bruce, who had 13 and a half sacks this year, 24 pressures. You can see Cornelius Bennett gets inside the blocker, the block of Jonathan Hayes. He makes the first contact. Bruce Smith cleans up. But it's two big plays by two big guys. Cornelius Bennett, what is a Super Bowl if he makes it? His uh, menu will be. He's quite a talent in the kitchen as well. Third and long. Phil Hansen. Played at North Dakota State. Just a farm kid. He knows what to do when it's third and long. He beats Ricky Sigler. He also beats Kimball Andrews. I mean, that was a good speed rush, not something that Hanson's known for. Barker to punt to Russell Copeland. Beautiful spiral. Retreat to the 34. 45. Fumble, and it goes out of the... No, they say he was down by contact. 51-yard punt, 12 on the return. Benny Thompson with another play. And we have a timeout. 10 minutes plus to go. Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's now. Order a large two-topping crunchy thin crust pizza and get any medium one-topping pizza free. The Kansas City Tomahawks lost a little of its metal. And one of the reasons, the pass rush of Buffalo. Hanson comes from the outside, gets Dave Craig on the ground with a good speed rush to the outside. And when he signed his original contract with Buffalo, was so light. Part of his contract is he must spend 15 weeks here in the offseason to lift weights to maintain his body weight. Now Buffalo leading by 10 with 10 minutes plus to go, starting at its 47. Herman moving up on the all-time playoff list, rushing in a game. Rodgers and Bayless make the tackle after an 11-yard game. Well, now the offensive line of the Buffalo Bills just having their way with the Kansas City Chiefs defense. We've got a Chief that looks like Joe Phillips. Big Joe. Thomas, with that yardage, has now moved uh, past Marcus Allen. Allen, 1984, had 154 yards in a game. Thurman has 156 now. And the way he's going could, because it's obvious that Buffalo's going to try to run the ball, uh, to have the best ever AFC Championship game as a runner. As well they should, Dick. Continue to run, takes pressure off the offense. Thurman Thomas on the sideline just for a little breather, a little rest. Give Kenneth Davis a couple of carries. Like they're just massaging a calf muscle for Thomas. Nothing serious. Uh, as much as he gets hit. I mean, you're, you're going to have bumps and bruises. And at some point, with just a week preparation for the Super Bowl, you wonder... Have we seen enough of Thurman Thomas? Do we give the ball to Kansas Davis? Save yourself for Atlanta, Georgia? Well, you know, you don't save yourself when you're only up by 10. Agreed. You're two possessions away from losing this game. And they, it looked to me like they were just rubbing uh, the back of his calf. Maybe a, a slight cramp. Something along those lines. Phillips looks more serious. Well, he's up in, a, in big, ambulatory. Big man from SMU. Played five years with the Chargers. See if we can pick up. There's Joe Phillips right there. He rolls into one of his guys. And they kind of land on him, too. A lot of big legs and big bodies flying around out there on that football field. I think he's all right. If not, he can sue. He's a lawyer, and so is wife. Ball at the 41-yard line. First down, Buffalo. 
each team with two timeouts remaining. Kelly has Kenneth Davis behind him now. And Davis. Hit by Sally Amour. No game. Dan Sally Amour. Over 300 pounds. Learned the rough way still. Dresses in the locker room with the practice players to Sally Amour. He says, that's the way I came into this league. Detroit didn't want me. I became a plan B. I'm going to stay where I started. Doesn't he bowl and play softball? During the football season. During the season. He says in softball, I either hit a home run or I strike out. It doesn't matter. I don't have to run. Right? He doesn't run for the baseball. Gary Thomas on the sidelines and a give to Thurman Thomas back in. And Thomas grinds out another five or six before Darren Nickel and Tracy Simeon can get him. Well, one of the great things about this Buffalo offensive line pick is both sides can pull. This is the counter run with 74 Parker leading, 70 Pina behind. And these are 300 plus pound guys looking like running backs out there. This is a very balanced offensive line. Buffalo has rushed for 205 yards today. Kansas City 52. Drew's knee is the report, Joe Phillips. Third and four. Caught for a first down by Metzelars at the 30. Covered by Lonnie Marks. And that'll chew up some more time for the Bills. And Kansas City committed so many to the line of scrimmage. In case of the run, you see Sally Amour right up there. Everybody at the line of scrimmage. Just a square out just deep enough for there to be the first down. Marks makes the tackle. Drive continues. Yeah, the Bills have protected Kelly so well. You saw how well they did last week. You know, the Bills in the last uh, three games of the regular season did not allow Kelly to be sacked one time. They've not given up a sack today. What happens when he is protected by the Grand Glass? Thurman. Burrows to the 27 yard line. Simeon there, the tackler. 7 21, 7 20 to go. Uh, the next big decision Marv Levy has to make is how much longer Thurman Thomas plays. Not much longer, in my estimation. Of course, their first Super Bowl against a Giants. They only had a week's time to prepare for that one, and that was certainly their best performance, and it was Thurman Thomas's best performance. Here's where Kelly, uh, so shrewd in clock management, He'll, well, they're used to the hurry-up offense. When they get in this situation, he knows how to spend every second between plays. Down to five on the play clock. Thurman Thomas into the secondary, looking for his third touchdown, and the fly goes down. Appeared to be a face mask as well. And with that run, Thurman Thomas moves. That's the second best game ever in the FC Championship. Goes past Paul Lowe of the Paul LA Lowe. Chargers in 61. Goodness. Face mask, 46 defense. First down. That was Benny Thompson. Again, the ability of Thurman Thomas to bounce. Right there, outside. There you see Thompson with the big hold on a face mask. I've seen enough of Thurman Thomas. If he's going to be in the Super Bowl next week, which it certainly appears he's going to, he's got the rest of the afternoon off for me. Only one man has ever rushed for more yards in this championship game, and that's Keith Lincoln. He's now back at his alma mater, Washington State, working in alumni affairs, you understand? Director of alumni. And we are deep into that record book now. With those names, Hewitt Dixon, Paul Lowe, Keith Lincoln. What's important here is Thomas in, a, in an era where it's been the passer that has all the big numbers, showing that uh, he is deserving of another trip to the Pro Bowl. I don't like to give me a little bit. 618, 617 to go. Using every second as Kelly. And Thomas buying every yard. Close to another touchdown. Well, that's it, good. Kenneth Davis is the short yardage and goal line running back, so. Thurman, how many game, game balls do you want? The ability of him to cut back, they cut off pursuit. Keith McKellar is on Neil Smith. 
That stop and go ability. Good block by the wide receiver, Don Beebe. Albert Lewis made the tackle and uh, hasn't gotten up yet. Ball inside the four. Look, it looks like they're leaving Thurman Thomas in here to pad his stats. Give him the trifecta. See if we can see what happened to Albert Lewis. Uh, gets his weight outside his knee. So a timeout with 5.55 to go, and they're starting to celebrate in Buffalo. Long before we ever been in Buffalo, in a commanding position as you look at general manager Carl Peterson of the Kansas City Chiefs, who brought Marcus Allen, brought Joe Montana, with Marty Scheimer, or Schottenheimer, brought Paul Hackett in as the new offensive coordinator, and... Uh, that expression hasn't changed much for Joe Montana. He won't remember much about uh, this game. First and goal. Thomas still in there. He's carried the ball more than anyone in AFC Championship history. His 33rd is his third touchdown. to step forward. Thurman Thomas is taking a giant leap forward. If anybody didn't think that he was the heart and soul of this offense, I think he's changed their mind today. Well, the opposing head coach knows, and Marty Schottenheimer spelled it out very clearly, we have to stop the run. We have to stop Thurman Thomas. We can't let him run north and south. Get his shoulders squared away because then he's not a 210-pound back or a 200-pound back. He's 240, and he's proven Marty to be uh, too good a prophet. Yes. And, of course, when you've got a running back over 200 yards, three touchdowns, the offensive line, who's played brilliantly today against a defensive line, that last week actually handled the Houston Oilers. Watch this offensive line. How big a hole is that? Untouched. That's the second time he scored without being touched. Jim Kelly, as tough as the blue-collar fans are in this great city, he may have his chance to uh, feed back the comments that he's had to live with as his teammates have had to hear through these last couple of years. And you bet they're back. They never went away. A lot of people tried to wish them away, but you don't wish the talent, the core of this team, and we've said it so many times, Marv Levy and the organization of Ralph Wilson have kept the core players here. And they don't go out and trade outside. They build from within. Christie adds the extra point. Get ready, Atlanta. Buffalo is coming to town. Relays present Look Who's Making Waves. Michael Irvin, this Dallas Cowboy is big news. Check it out. When I was seven, people told me I was too small to play football. Last I checked, I'm wearing a big Super Bowl ring. I drive a big car and have a big house. Welcome to my house. I bought my big family a big TV so they can all see my nice big smile. So if anybody tells you you're too small, tell them Michael says, think big. For his retirement, Neil McBain had no intention of slowing down. That's why Dean Witter mapped out his financial course with only one goal in mind. Victory. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. This Goodyear Aqua Tread pumps away over a gallon of water every second with its deep groove aqua channel. That's 396 gallons per mile. Think about it. The all-season Aqua Tread, only from Goodyear. Next Sunday, Charles Barkley leads the Suns against the Celtics. Plus at halftime, the retirement of Kevin McHale's number 32. The NBA on NBC Super Sunday. 
Mr. Enberg, I, I have a question for you. Yes. How many Rocky movies did they make? <laughs> this is Sylvester Stallone's team. <laughs> he likes the repeat, doesn't he? Buffalo Bills 4. In the history of major professional team sports, only one team, only once in this century as a team lost the championship game three straight years and still qualified to go to a four. The Buffalo will be the second. The Cleveland Browns did it in the 50s. That includes hockey, basketball, football, and baseball. John Stevens. City retains possession. Pasker. Yeah, he knocked it out. Just punched it right out of Stevens' arm. Pasker from Leota, Kansas. Where they can see the little town from six miles away from the farm. Married a girl from Leota, Kansas. As you see, just punched the ball out. Didn't date her in high school. How is that possible? It's out of 1,500 people. You don't meet Miss Wright until you leave high school. Four straight times, Pro Bowl selection. He made the Pro Bowl in the second week of the season when he made that play in Dallas on the goal line where he batted the ball midair back into play. Dave Craig in an impossible situation. Gets it downfield for a catch and a fumble. A rule down by contact is now the call as Mark Maddox tackles Willie Davis out at the 33-yard line. Cornelius Bennett was all over Dave Craig as he threw. Well, what do you think, Bob Trumpy? Uh, you go out and you spend the money to get two veterans on the bell curve. They're on the backside of that bell curve with their experience and their age. Craig incomplete to Barnett, Tim Barnett. You get Montana, I mean, would, having to do it over again, would you say Carl Peterson goes for it? Huh? Uh, I, I think it's a great choice by Carl Peterson to get Marcus and Joe Montana. Paul Hackett has said this offense is not complete until we can do it without substitution. And that's the way Bill Walsh and the 49ers used to do it. The same five skilled position athletes are out there, yes. Paul Hackett, Joe Montana have changed the look of this Kansas City team. I think it was a very smart move on their part. Second and ten for Craig. He has to eat it. Bruce Smith has the fourth sack for Buffalo. Oh, a little, a little extra for Neil Smith. That's a Neil's celebration on a sack. Neil, Neil does his left-handed. Bruce did his right-handed. That's the 12th postseason sack for Bruce Smith, the all-time leader. Now, see, this is this is from the right side of the plate. Neil Smith does it from the left side of the plate. <laughs> Greg just does dump it off to Allen on the screen to the 30. Allen to the 40. Allen's breaking tackles out to the 50. Oh, Craig, you better check his birth certificate. He'd be uh, only 33 the way he still gallops. And there's a little extra emotion left. First down to Kansas City in Buffalo territory on a 26-yard play. Of course, with Marcus Allen, he had those two years off. Basically did nothing but sit on the sideline and looked like Rodan's thinker. Saw an awful lot of games, didn't play in many. And he still has the fire. Yeah, what he can bring, what Joe Montana and Marcus Allen add to your team off the field, maybe just as important as what they do for you on the field. It would be a shock if both aren't back next year. That's for certain. Craig underneath to Jonathan Hayes, a short gainer of uh, three or four yards under the five-minute mark, so the clock will stop on the out-of-bounds. Thomas Smith makes the tackle. Second and six. All right, the Buffalo Bills looking ahead now against the NFC. Look what they did this year, and this was against that NFC East. They beat Dallas without Emmett Smith, we should add. There should be an asterisk there. Beat the Giants by three, beat Washington and Philadelphia. Three of them very competitive games. But nevertheless, 4-0 against the NFC this year. And they won at San Francisco last year. Bruce Smith got one of the great jumps of all time or was offside against just a great jump. No flag. J.J. Burden with the catch and a first down inside the 40. I also think for Marv Levy, just that one week's preparation for the Super Bowl helps Buffalo. 
because they keep things in order. You can't change a lot offensively or defensively in one week. You just play with what got you there. Craig, side arms it out. Fine catch made by Dane and Hughes. And uh, the last two times, no catch now. They're saying the ball is on the ground. The last two times the Super Bowl has been played on a one-week period rather than the two-week period have been very competitive very games. Competitive. While the AFC has lost nine in a row, the two closest games have been in the one-week period. That was the Buffalo Giant game where Buffalo almost beat the Giants, and the other was when Montana rallied San Francisco late against Cincinnati to win 2016. Those were one-week preparation Super Bowls. Second down to kill. Cornelius Bennett, he throws it as the outside uh, the pocket. I oh, guess he was, so there's no intentionally grounded. Dick, I think uh, Johnny Greer is being kind here today, Craig, knowing the situation. Well, things weren't kind for Buffalo and Pasadena in the Super Bowl last year. Emmett Thomas with a deadly fumble, one of nine turnovers committed by Buffalo against the Cowboys. I don't think there is has been or ever will be a team that coughed it up nine times no. one again. And, and, and Dick, that performance last year is an absolute foul odor on this football team. It's lost in the manner in which they play. Yeah, they call it the stink. Craig goes deep to Willie Davis. Intercepted by J.D. Williams, a man who was benched this year at cornerback. And that will taste good to Williams, who's been sitting on the pines the latter half of the year. So celebrate, Buffalo. You've stayed with your team. And all around you wanted it to go away. Willie Davis, the intended receiver. J.D. Williams looked more like the receiver there than Willie Davis. Davis kind of gave up on the play slightly. So if Buffalo doesn't fumble, that'll mean that that consecutive streak of the team that gives it away the most loses, or more positively, if you take it away more than the other team, you win 27 straight playoffs. The team with the most takeaways. Each with an interception, Montana and Craig, and uh, Kelly with one turnover. Mark Kelso. One of the men back on safety. Kenneth Davis now is the running back. Trying to run out the clock and not much there. Tackled by McDaniels. So well, let's go back a year ago. It was the game of the year at Candlestick, San Francisco and Buffalo. Did the 49ers beat Dallas? And Jim Kelly had Sunday. This was a record-setting day. Thurman Thomas getting behind Romanowski. There was not a punt by either team in the game. The offense is up and down the field. Never happened in NFL history. No punts. I have never seen more receivers running unimpeded towards the goal line in one game in my whole life. That one. Time out, 3.18 to go. Think of all this last year and, and then the other side saying, yeah, but they've got more experience. Who do they match up better against, Dallas or the Niners? I frankly think they match up better with San Francisco just because of the lousy performance they had against Dallas last year. I don't think they want to face Dallas again. But the one thing about this football team, Dick, this Buffalo Bill football team, is I personally am running out of questions to ask these guys. I'm going to have to think hard about finding something else about them, but more than happy to. Craig to McNair incomplete with 154 to go. Well, the Kansas City fans, the bulk of them were up in that far upper deck corner and not many staying around to see uh, the Buffalo fans enjoy. Pretty well defined. That's just about where they were. Well, right next door is a happy man and we hope because he's such a great gentleman that uh, he'll be even happier next Saturday before the Super Bowl. Charlie Joyner, one of the assistant coaches with Buffalo, Right next to our booth is one of the 15 finalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That'll be announced the day before the Super Bowl. Willie Davis with the pass, tackled immediately by Mickey Washington. Pass to Willie Davis. No one works harder in this game to make himself a great player than Charlie Joyner on his numbers have proved his success, and we uh, hope he gets in. Uh, Charlie Joyner was a teammate of mine. I never saw anybody working harder than he did. Craig, the pass. Uh, he's 
Bears Bulldog now to Matt Darby. Darby had his moment in this season. He was the man who made the interception in the final play at Dallas to deny the Cowboys a win there. The Buffalo Bills neutralized Joe Montana today. And the way he was playing this season, I didn't think that was possible. Craig going deep for Burden. Out of bounds. Nate Odom's on the coverage. And a thanks to our producer, John Paratsis, director, John Gonzalez. Good to have Tommy Roy, our executive uh, producer here as well. Our president, Dick Ebersole. All the men and women who brought you the pictures and the, the sounds of this event. And Gerard Schneiderman, Steve Solomon, Michael Gluck helping us here in the booth. Uh, you know, in the conversations we had with the Kansas City Chiefs, I remember Derek Thomas telling us that whether or not Kansas City goes to the Super Bowl, he owns a limo service, he's going to have three cars there. That's Cash again. And the big tight end inside the 15-yard line, tackled by Kelso and Schultz with 47, 46 seconds left. So Derek Thomas doesn't go. Derek Thomas's limousines go to the Super Bowl. Oh, he'll be there. He said personal service. Personal service. You might want to drive that man around. Norman Thomas. Throw away by Craig. And now these uh, fans in Rich Stadium only hope. <laughs> like a bad nightmare. <laughs> They're back, and the fans hope for any semblance of a performance like this in the Super Bowl. Well, you'll all have your rooting interest, but uh, for those of you with a taste for history, and a uh, taste, if you can believe it, for an underdog. They're going to be a touchdown or better underdog if you read sure. all the things you do from out in Nevada. But uh, this is a team that has, you talk about putting all of it out there on the table for one big roll. That's it. And if you hit the number, you'll be remembered as one of the great teams forever. Underneath it goes to Dana Hughes. And Hughes to the three-yard line with 17 seconds. And Dick, it's very obvious this Buffalo team, when they protect the football, they are very difficult to handle. Congratulations, Buffalo. Final play of the game, incomplete. No, two seconds left. Nate Odoms breaks it up. That was the 51st pass attempt by Kansas City today. Against all odds, Dick. They win seven of their first eight games and go five and three in the second half of the season. The most difficult part of repeating is getting through the regular season to the playoffs. And Buffalo has been spectacular in postseason play. Except those games with Roman numerals behind them. Be nice for Kansas City to get a touchdown on the final play, wouldn't it? Consecutive times, the Super Bowl loser have now earned a fourth straight trip to the big party. A rare achievement. But will the slipper fit in Atlanta?
thing. I didn't say they were super yet. And the opportunity is placed before them. Can they be one of the truly great NFL teams of all time? Congratulations, Buffalo Bills. We'll see you next Sunday. And we go to Jim Lampley. A reminder that the NFC Championship game doesn't kick off until 4.03 Eastern time. The 49ers and Cowboys, that will determine the Bills' opponent next Sunday in Atlanta. Between now and then, we'll bring you all the jubilation from the Buffalo locker room, the presentation of the Lamar Hunt Trophy to the AFC champions. OJ will bring us interviews with the Bills players. Will McDonough will be in the Kansas City locker room. And we'll get the comments of my colleagues Mike Ditka and Joe Gibbs on today's game. We'll get started with all of that right after these messages from your local station. Rick Schroeder fights with the only love he has left. I just lost my Whereas mind. you can see, the Buffalo Bills have again accomplished their mission, beating the Chiefs 30-13 to, to win the AFC Championship for the fourth consecutive year. Very shortly, we will take you down to O.J. Simpson in the Bills' winning locker room. We'll have the Lamar Hunt Trophy presentation. We'll talk to the players, starting with the Bills after Mike Ditka, a near flawless performance by Buffalo. Well, I think the big difference from the first time they played, Jim, we talked about it earlier, the ability of Jim Kelly to audible, where he, where he wasn't bothered by the fans, had the ability to audible. He caught a flawless football game. They gave the ball to Thurman Thomas over 30 times in the game. We knew that would be the key thing. Kansas City did a very poor job on defense. They tried to play a 4-1 uh, uh, six defense, and it did not work out. They needed beefier people with the linebacker position to stop that back once he came through the line of scrimmage. Those defensive backs couldn't stop him. We talked through much of the first half of the season about Buffalo's difficulties on offense. They had to adjust to the absence of explosiveness with James Lofton having left and now Bill Brooks in the starting lineup. They seem to have made that adjustment. But I think the big adjustment was Jim Kelly on the field. I think he called the majority of the plays by audibly, and I think it it's really almost like a two-minute offense he was running out there. That's what made him so effective. When Kelly is operating at his best is when he's calling his own play and doing what he thinks he can make that offense work. And, of course, great running backs having great days can make a team look great. Today, Joe Gibbs, Thurman Thomas, 186 yards, much of it behind a terrific performance by the Buffalo offensive line. Hey, great atmosphere, huh? Hey, Mike, like being on the sidelines, man. Well, we got a couple idiots hey, out here hey. in Buffalo. Listen, listen, I think that uh, Mike hit the nail on the head. Kansas City could not stop the rush. With the front they had up there over and over again, they just kept giving it to Thurman, and uh, it made for a long day. I also thought that, you know, really Montana started off, he had a tough time throwing the ball in this kind of weather. And I think it was tough for him. Craig, I think, was more effective. But it was uh, really mostly just a running game, and I thought Buffalo did a heck of a job. Kept handing it off. Thurman kept running. Made for a long day for Kansas City. Hey, you got to give these guys credit now. I tell you what, to come back Buffalo with an organization like this and not fall apart after those three big losses in Super Bowl. An early observation, and there'll be more of this to come. You coached one of the teams that blew Buffalo out in a Super Bowl. With each passing year, the question must be asked, are they better now and more equipped for this experience than they were before? Well, I, I'm impressed with this fact. When you, we talked to Thurman Thomas last week, I was impressed with the way he had set his mind. In the past, he concentrated a lot maybe on himself or guys got upset. This team is very much together. I think they've grown through those experiences. And I've been impressed this year with the way they've gone about business. Kelly, Thurman Thomas, all the stars that they have. The front office has done a good job keeping them together. I think they're battle-tested now. And I tell you what, it, it'll be a great story if they can get the monkey off their back. And I think they have a chance to do it. They certainly played great today, and they did the things you got to do. When you physically run the football, it demoralizes the other team. Passing's great. Being fancy's great. But when you run the football and knock people down and knock them back, that's, that's, that's man's football. The most psychologically powerful weapon in football, the ability to knock your opponent off the line of scrimmage and run the ball up his throat. So now for the fourth consecutive year, the Buffalo Bills are headed to the Super Bowl. They will play either San Francisco or Dallas. If it's the Cowboys, it will be the first ever Super Bowl rematch in consecutive years. Right now, let's head down to the winning locker room and join O.J. Simpson. Juice. 
Jim, I'm here with uh, Neil Austrian, president of the National Football League, with the Lamar Hunt Trophy, trophy emblematic of the best of the American League as he presents it to Ralph Wilson, president of the Buffalo Bills, for a record fourth straight time. Ralph, it's my pleasure to give you the Lamar Hunt Trophy for the AFC Championship. It was unprecedented. You've done it four years in a row. You beat four different opponents. Our congratulations to you, Marv, the entire Bills organization. I know the Georgia Dome and Super Bowl 28 await you in Atlanta next week. And on behalf of the entire league, good luck next week against either San Francisco or Dallas. And again, congratulations for a terrific year, and you've built a wonderful team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much. Thank you, OJ. Uh, hey, fellas, hold it up. This wasn't, uh, yeah, I didn't have any prearranged uh, talk for this, but I just want to congratulate uh, all of you from starting with Marv and his staff and all of you players for the tremendous effort you've made starting in Berlin in July and all the way through the season in winning this fourth conference championship game. I'm proud of you. You're a great bunch. And you played a wonderful game today against a terrific team in Can uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. And um, I salute you. Ralph, you got to be proud of this group. It says something about the resiliency of this group of ball players, especially this man right here, Thurman Thomas. Well, I... Am I supposed to say something? Or is Thurman supposed to? Uh, I tell you, I've seen Thurman make a lot of runs, but I've never seen him uh, run harder than he did today. And uh, you certainly... Uh, the recognition your fellow teammates gave you, Thurman. Right, Thurman, are you surprised at the ease in which you were able to move the ball against these guys today? Well, you know, considering the game plan that they have defensively, uh, they came in to stop me on the run and on the pass, but uh, I got coaches came up with a great game plan. Offensive line did the best job they've ever did since I've been a Buffalo Bill, and uh, we just went out, we executed very, very well, and uh, that's why we was able to get all the rushing yards I was at. Are you surprised that, that not only did you move the ball against these guys so well, but what does it say about the resiliency of this team? I know uh, nobody wanted you to go back to the Super Bowl, yet that was the goal of this group of guys. Well, you're right. Nobody wanted to go back, but uh, we believed in ourselves as a team, as an organization, and as a player. So uh, you, we knew that, hey, if we get back, we would hear a lot of the questions about nobody wanting us back. But this team has been through much uh, over the past three years since losing three Super Bowls. And we would just thank God that we were able to pull out the day and go down to that. And that's win one uh, our fourth place. Looking at the game that's being played this afternoon, uh, do you sort of want to see Dallas come to this game for, I don't know, to, to kind of make amends for the performance of last year? Well, OJ, at this one time, you know, we just want to celebrate the victory we had. We can't worry about what team we're going to play, or whether it's the Dallas Cowboys or the San Francisco 49ers. We know that we have to take care of our business and the Buffalo Bills. But standing over here is a guy who did a great job today. Not great numbers, but very effective Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, you started this year. You said, and I paraphrase, uh, let's tee them off and go a fourth time. Well, I think you certainly teed off a lot of Americans out there. Well, I think uh, near the end of the week and all I kept hearing was more people turn, turning towards us saying that you guys have accomplished a lot. And uh, if you guys get there, we're going to be pulling for you. Hey, we, we don't have to prove anything to anybody. We're champions in our own mind. And there's one more river to cross. And just going out there, no pressure on us. Just go and have some fun. Tell me about today's game. I mean, you have to be surprised at the ease in which you guys were able able to control the ball offensively well the key to the game was the offensive line you know going into the playoffs we knew that uh, if we we're going to win uh, by any stretch of anybody's imagination it was going to be the guys up front the guys came off did a heck of a job Thurman ran like Thurman Thomas and uh, keyed everything was uh, everybody stayed poised and well, we got Bruce Smith standing right here right now but we're going to throw it over to the other locker room to Will Madonna with the Kansas City Chiefs we're going to go right but Okay, thanks very much, Juice. We're with Marty Schottenheim. And Marty, first of all, what's the condition of Joe Montana? I think Joe's fine. Uh, well, he had uh, a mild concussion, uh, hit his head on the, uh, the, the surface, and uh, um, really wasn't uh, functional to be able to come back and play. I think he'll be fine, though. Going into the game, you said the one thing you really wanted to do was stop Thurman Thomas, and yet you couldn't get that done. Well, we pointed toward that. That was a big uh, uh, issue for us, and I'm sure their objective was to try to get him to perform as he did. We're disappointed, obviously, but uh, he's a great back, and, uh, you know, that football team uh, has taken a lot of heat from a lot of people, and uh, uh, they're a hell of a damn football team, and uh, they're a well-coached football team, as you know, and uh, my hat's off to them. 
Yeah, how about Derek Thomas today, Monty? He was in and out of the game. Was he injured, or was this something you guys were doing defensively? Uh, it was part of the thing we were trying to do uh, uh, with the defensive group, uh, but he was not injured. Uh, we have a group of personnel that we call uh, Big Chief, and it's uh, a bigger 280-pound guy to put on those tight ends. Yeah. Today, uh, I think when you look at the game, you're just going to say physically it looked like the Buffalo Bills did a great job. They were a better team than us today. There's no doubt about that, Will. But on the other hand, you know, we've had a damn good season. I've told our players there's no reason for you to let the frustration of this moment dull the uh, accomplishment of a fine season in 93. Thanks, Marty. Okay. Let's get back to Jim Lampley. All right, thank you very much, Will. Certainly, if you're a fan of the old American Football League, it was fun to see the Chiefs against the Bills here today. But the team, which was clearly dominant, was the Buffalo Bills. We'll head back to the Bills locker room, and we will have more interviews with the victorious Buffalo players when we come back to Rich Stadium. People say it's what's inside the counts. Well, people, I got a confession. Again, a second Sitting side by side, someone else said, you know, it doesn't make any difference whether you go down on Monday or Tuesday, whether you go to a hideaway hotel two nights or one night. makes a difference what happens when you show up at the stadium. And when we show up at the stadium, we got to do something different. Well, you showed up today. Congratulations. And we'll see you in Atlanta next week. I'll look forward to it, OJ. Thank you. Jim Lampley, a happy locker room here in Buffalo. And indeed, Juice, a happy western New York, where a lot of people were made angry last week, Mike, by a lighthearted comment you made on our program. I'll give you a chance to set the record straight. You used the word boring in reference to Buffalo success. You're not the only one who said it. You appreciate them as much as anyone. Well, I think Buffalo uh, deserves all the credit in the world for going to four Super Bowls. I don't think the idiots out here throwing stuff at us deserve any credit at all. I think it's a disgrace to anything I've ever seen. Regardless of their feelings or my feelings, what they're trying to do is going to hurt somebody, and that's wrong. So I guess it's a, I guess it's a, what I'm saying is they're lousy, these people around here anyway. Joe, will the Bills players root for Dallas to beat San Francisco to get a chance at specific revenge? I don't think they're going to root for anybody. I think they're too smart to say. I think they're going to sit and watch the game. I did pick up on Marv right there. One thing he's got on this team, I think, you know, when I had good football teams in Washington, there were about eight or nine guys I leaned on that were those veteran guys. I think he's got that on this team. Kelly, Thomas, you know, the defensive guy, Smith. I think he's got a good feeling right now, and they've really stayed focused is what I, I think has happened with this team. And I think they'll, they'll make a good showing in this Super Bowl. I think it's going to, and I don't think they're going to pull for anybody today. They're going to take whoever's there. They've done a lot of winning. How much have they learned from three times losing the ultimate game? We're about to find out one more time. So Buffalo heads to Atlanta. We'll be with them. As we say goodbye, we'd like to acknowledge the men and women who brought you all the sights and sounds from today's game here in Buffalo. And we'll see you next Sunday as the Bills take on either the 49ers or the Cowboys.